Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. Fiend Phone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com. But we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone. I never knew remote audio could be this good. Oh, 10,000. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. You can help new minds find liberty. Chip in at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, September 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.84 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,138 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $233. Antiwar.com reports Turkish warplanes have launched a new round of airstrikes against northern Iraq, as well as some other areas in southeastern Turkey. At least five PKK members were killed in the attacks inside Turkey and an unknown number of others wounded in Iraq. PKK forces also carried out ambushes against Turkish forces in southeastern Bengal, killing at least one soldier and and wounding five others. The PKK forces were blocking roads in two eastern provinces and ambushed the troops as they were headed there to confront them. Turkish airstrikes against northern Iraq were extremely common during the U.S. occupation of Iraq, but had halted during the two-year ceasefire with the PKK, which was to lead to peace talks. Some PKK officials suggested that a return to ceasefire was possible initially, but were spurned by the government, which insisted that there could be no talk of ceasefire unless the PKK wholly disarmed and left the country first. The PKK is influential in the Kurdish southeast of Turkey, and the war has fueled military crackdowns against other Kurdish towns, adding to the tensions. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the parents of Ahmed Mohammed have hired lawyers and plan to sue over how he was treated for bringing his homemade clock to school. The 14-year-old Texan was handcuffed and taken to an Irving police station after a teacher mistook his clock for a hoax bomb, and he has become quite a celebrity, both ridiculed and regaled for his invention. His family said in a statement Wednesday they will pursue Ahmed's legal rights and regain his science project from the Irving Police Department. Charges were not filed, but after 
after MacArthur High School in Irving suspended the young man for three days. His parents withdrew all three of their children from the Irving School District, citing religious persecution. Now the parents have hired two high-powered Dallas attorneys, Thomas Bauer and Reggie London, to represent them. The Irving police told CNN the teen's clock is available for him to pick up. The family lawyers say they will sue because the teen has been severely traumatized and no one should be treated the way he was. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day, she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports a federal judge on Wednesday denied Kim Davis a stay of his order requiring her office to issue marriage licenses to all eligible couples who want one, the latest setback for a Kentucky clerk who went to jail rather than issue marriage licenses. Lawyers for couples suing Davis have said that since her return to work, the Rowan County clerk has interfered with the issuance of marriage licenses in violation of the orders by U.S. District Judge David Bunning in Louisville. An attorney for Davis has said she made a good faith effort to complete with Bunning's orders. She has said licenses granted by her staff are invalid because she has not given them that authority. Davis has refused to issue any marriage license since the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in June that made same-sex marriage legal across the country. Her stance has made Kentucky the latest flashpoint in the U.S. debate over same-sex marriage. Davis has said her beliefs prevent her from issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples. She has asked Bunning repeatedly to put his order requiring the issue of marriage licenses on hold hold while she appeals. Bunning said on Wednesday that without clarification, he would have left other eligible couples at the mercy of Davis's no marriage policy. On Monday, lawyers for the couples suing Davis said she had made material changes to the marriage license forms after her return to work on September 14th that left questions about their legality. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A new medical study on the effects of marijuana use confirms that everyone knows you're high and that you'll never stop feeling like this. Everyone can smell the marijuana on your breath and on your clothes. Everyone is laughing at you. Additionally, the in-depth report reveals that despite trying to act cool, you're definitely laughing too much and everyone is messing with you. Your parents know you're high, your friends know you're high. Strangers on the street know you're high. If you're young and you smoke marijuana, you will probably never be able to find a job. And if you're an adult, you will most likely be fired. If you hear a noise, that's probably the police and you're probably going to jail. While previous studies suggested that it's all good and that we're all made of the same stuff that makes stars, New research indicates that your brain got broken and you shouldn't have done this. Doctors say the study raises important questions such as, what if that wasn't just marijuana and how are you going to get home? This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Talk Live. The number is 855-450-3733. It's 855-453, and you can call in, and you can talk about whatever's on your mind. It's Mark with you. Daryl. And Johnson. And we always bring, of course, things to the table, and, well, Daryl, you got a whopper today. Apparently, there's been a poll done, um, and half of Americans consider the United States government to be a threat. Nearly half. It's 49%, which is enough close enough to half. It's within the statistical margin of error. And apparently Gallup has been asking this question for a dozen years, off and on, yeah. for a dozen years. They report that 49% of Americans say that the federal government poses an immediate threat to the rights and freedoms of ordinary sim- ordinary citizens which is similar to what was found in previous surveys conducted over the last five years. 
When the question was first asked in 2003, less than one-third of Americans held this attitude. So it was less than a third, and how long ago was that? That was in 2003, and I have a theory on why it was so few in 2003. Well, I would assume it had something to do with 9-11. Go ahead. Exactly. That That's my theory, anyway, is it, it wasn't that long after 9-11, and it was when George Bush was ramping up support for invading Iraq and was still telling people, if you're not with us, you're with the terrorists. Yeah, there was that. And a lot of people were scared to speak up and say, yeah, I think the government is coming after my freedoms. But now people aren't necessarily as scared and they're willing to say, yes, I think the government is coming after my freedoms and something interesting, looking at the trends here, even though it was only 30% in 2003, in 2004, it was 35%, 2005, it was 37 then it was 44% in 2006. And they did not ask the question again until 2010 when it was 46%. Okay, so... It's been steadily going up. Yes, doesn't steadily matter who, going doesn't up. doesn't matter whether it's a Republican or a Democrat in office. Right. Although, if you look at, and they actually break this down by political party, surprise, surprise, the people who identify as Republican or independents who lean Republican in 2003 were a lot less likely to say yes to the question than they are now that a Democrat is president. In 2010, 63% of Republicans answered yes to the question. In 2006, 24% answered yes to the same question. And it's now only 65, I, I say only 65% of Republicans. That, that's only a 2% change from 2010. Democrats, on the other hand, 59% answered yes to the question in 2006 compared to 26% in 2010 so essentially, and 32% now. Basically, you're going to find 60% of uh, Democ of the party that isn't in office. The opposition yeah, party. People that identify as the party that is not in the office, 60% are going to say the world's ending. Yes. And um, uh, the as opposed to... 30% of them when 25 to 30 25 to 30 percent when their party is in office yes that right okay and they then ask an open-ended question only to the people that answer yes to the first question of do you believe the federal government is an immediate threat to the rights and freedoms of ordinary citizens and the answers of that because it's an open-ended question, it sort of gives you a little bit of insight into what people are thinking when they answer yes. 19%, meaning roughly one out of five people. What I would be saying if it was asked to me is, do you think the government is an immediate threat? I would be saying yes. And the and they asked me what the immediate threat is, is I'm certain this year they're going to demand money from me. And if I don't pay it, they'd be willing to throw me in jail. So taxes is essentially the answer that you are giving. Okay. Uh, 3% gave that. All right. Johnson, how would you answer the question of in what ways do you see the federal government posing an immediate threat to the rights and freedoms of its citizens? Uh, first of all, I would answer yes, absolutely, that they're a threat. And in what way? Every way. I mean, government is essentially antithetical to freedom, period. <laughs> so I will put you in the one out of five people that said government is too big. Okay. <laughs> so 19% gave some variant of there are too many laws or government is too big. 15% said violations of civil liberties and freedom in general. 12% cited gun control. 10% They're gonna cited... Get our guns. Too much involvement in people's private lives. I'd agree with that. And they actually, Gallup winds up, they, they do a very good job of showing trends from previous surveys to now. The too many laws, government too big, is within statistical margin of error from 2010. It was 18%. Now it's 19 
the violation of freedoms and civil liberties without going into a specific civil liberty is at 15% now. It did not register in 2010. Freedom of speech was at 15% in 2010, now at 6%. And I think part of that is you have a lot of those people that are going into just the violation of civil liberties civil category. Liberties, liberties generally, yeah. Well, I, I think that it's it's difficult to, to give a bunch of statistics on error, uh, but it it does show that, wow, 49% of Americans consider the government, the state, the federal government, to be a threat. An immediate threat. An immediate Not threat. Not just a threat, because th those are two different things. Because something could be a threat maybe five years down the road. This question was, do you believe the government poses an immediate threat? Well, I think that that's, uh, it's very interesting that Americans have come to this, uh, this conclusion. Um, I'm, you know, I mean, obviously the, you know, the, the state, the model that we have of the government today. Now, I don't, it's, it's not that I'm trying to get rid of government or anything like that. It's just the type of government we've, that's been passed down. A republic really isn't much different than making everybody the king. So it's not that much different than having an autocrat. I, I would say it's a good bit different than if everybody was the king. Everybody's the king at the same time? But not everybody is the king at the same time. But they time. vote for a guy to sit over who basically does the role which of is, the king. Which in, is different than everybody being the king. All right, so it passes back and forth between groups. I wouldn't even say it passes back and forth in between groups. What it is, the, this representative democracy thing that we have, is you have a plurality of people that are deciding who is going to make decisions. I, I don't even want to say it's a majority of people because, well, for one thing, you very rarely have a majority of people that show up to vote. And quite often, if you have more than two options, there's a very good chance that you're not going to have a majority of people that vote that elect the guy to go represent. Like Clinton. He won so, in uh, his second go round. He won by less than 51%. His first and second, both. He okay. did not have a majority. Okay. He had a plurality. So you know, what was he, it the first one? Who was? He, he had like thirty-seven percent, forty-one percent, something like is that. Is that with Perot? Perot ran in both ninety-two and ninety-six. Is that so? Yes, and yeah. a lot of people like to blame Perot for George Bush losing the election in ninety-two. If you look at exit polling and you believe those numbers, people that voted for Perot were almost equally divided in their second choice of would have voted for Clinton or would have voted for Bush. So you you can, well, you could blame Perot for any number of things, but you would be incorrect in doing so. Well, Her Ju uh, George Herbert Walker Bush uh, certainly blames Perot for it. I uh, saw that in an interview. Uh, what do you think? Um, the government as an immediate threat. Is this, uh, do you consider them a threat? Do you think this poll is inspiring? 1-855-450-3733, 855-450-FREE. His hair was falling out in clumps. Our golden retriever, Sundance, he scratched incessantly. Mounds and mounds of fur all over the place. Our hairballs have hairballs. Olive was suffering like a dog. She was itching, she was scratching, she was licking 24 hours a day. Just chewing and chewing and chewing. So. Scratching and, and biting. Buddy, my Shih Tzu's itching problem, constantly licking his feet. It keeps me up at night. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acid. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa, the digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The shedding slowed down to almost none. The scratching went away after a few days. Tons of energy, no more bad smells. The shedding has stopped and the itching has stopped. Sleep at night. Oh, let me do it again. Sleep at night. Get your dog some Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. No! That's the sound your brain makes when you realize you're buying something and forgot the coupon. Online or in a store, knowing that you're missing a deal is the worst. 
You need the app from Retail Me Not right now. Get thousands of coupons from 50,000 stores like Kohl's, Domino's, Best Buy, and more with crazy deals like 60% off, free shipping, and free gifts with purchase. You can get a text invite to download the Retail Me Not app 100% free right now for Apple or Android. Just text the code UPDATE to 42767. Then just show your phone at checkout to save. It literally couldn't be easier. It's 2015. Keep your coupon bonds in your phone. Stop what you're doing and text UPDATE to 42767. Listeners will get a text with a link to download it 100% free. Never forget another coupon again. Text the code UPDATE to 42767 right now. That's UPDATE to 42767. Message and data rates may apply. For terms and privacy, visit RetailMeNot.com. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards, it's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting vandykemortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Thursday, gold is up $18 at $1,149 per ounce. Silver is 24 cents higher at $15.08 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at 232 US dollars. The prospect for getting ahead on Silver American Eagles looks bad, but we have plenty of maples, spiders, and Britannias in stock. Give us a call, 800-874-9760, or visit us online at rrbi.co. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. We just read uh, a poll from, is it Rasmussen? Gallup. Gallup. A Gallup poll that says apparently 49%, half, half of Americans consider the federal government to be an immediate threat. And this is, this is pretty interesting. Interesting times we live in. Um, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if it was ever, because this poll's only, uh, they've only been doing it for 15 years. I wonder if there's Not any time, quite. Yeah, any time in, in American history where this was the truth uh, previously. But it seems, it seems like a lot of big, it's a big number. I, I've seen other polls where it showed up to like 65% of Americans answered yes, or rather answered no to the question, does the federal government have your consent? Or does the federal government have the consent of the governed? Yeah, that's it. And, you know, like that, that's the lie that we're told in elementary school, right? Is that governments exist with the consent of the governed because that's what was written on some parchment 200 and some odd years ago. Trust us. That's what Thomas Jefferson said. And Thomas Jefferson wouldn't lie to you because George Washington chopped down a cherry tree and admitted it. And that's why Abe Lincoln was called Honest Abe. Right. You have uh, consented by living here is usually what people will finally run to after you say, but I didn't consent. I didn't sign anything. I didn't sign the Constitution. No, there is no social contract. It's not 
uh, you know, I, I got nothing to do with this. Right. The you consented by being here. It's the implicit consent. They, there and that's are true. several types of consent. And that's true when you go on somebody's property. But the, I want to talk about um, that here in just one second. It's Mark with you, by the way. Daryl. And Johnson. And uh, the uh, by the way, um, I, I've used Save It Purse for a couple of months now. And it's a great way to save, like, 20 percent uh, i've consented to 30 percent savings 30 percent savings on save it purse depending on the situation expressed consent we at my house just uh, did a big purchase uh, my son jack had saved up a bunch of money um, from doing chores and help feeding the pigs and a variety of different things and he bought a lego uh, Hel- marvel lego helicarrier thing oh um, that thing's huge it's gigantic but this thing's three hundred and fifty dollars, and he saved his money. Now he he did get some in birthday birthday money and all that stuff. Legos are expensive, but we bought it on purse, and he saved. I think it was it was like fifty bucks off of it. It was twenty percent. He saved twenty percent, and he's going to be able. To, he saved the whole amount because that's how much it was, and I how much I said he had to save. But now he gets to keep fifty bucks and buy another Lego or something with it, and. That makes him very happy. Does he have his own Bitcoin wallet? He doesn't, no. Um, you should set him up with one. Well, I don't know exactly. Uh, and I don't know if we're ready for that. But n- nonetheless, uh, you can save 20, 25, 30% by using Bitcoin to purchase the things that you normally purchase at Amazon. So, yes, you're going to have to get some Bitcoin. And yes, I'll tell you how to do that here coming up very shortly. But um, yeah, save at purse.com. Go get your account. Go register it right now. Save at purse.com. I don't know, man. He could have built that uh, that entire helicarrier in Minecraft. And that would be like two years of a server. He's been working on <laughs> uh, things like that in, in Minecraft, too. Um, so he's built all kinds of different things. It's it's amazing. To Hold see. on. There's a Minecraft, too? Also. Oh, okay. So... Uh, yeah, uh, the this this thing where the gov- the federal government is uh, is a threat. I'm kind of surprised that there were that many people that consider the federal government a threat. I'm surprised there were that many that consider the federal government an immediate threat. You keep on stressing it, no doubt about it. But I, uh, do you think that there are people out there that consider the government a threat that don't consider it an immediate threat? I mean, probably. What's the, yes. What's the percentage of people that answered no? I don't consider the government to be an immediate threat. I don't know. I wasn't conducting the survey, oh. and they don't give that information. All right. They just give the number of people that said yes, the number of people that said no, and the people that said, I don't know. And then one thing that's interesting, looking here at the follow-up question, where they say, in what ways is the federal government an immediate threat to the rights and freedoms of its citizens? 3% said none. Meaning that people that just answered yes to the question thought that the thought that the government was a threat, but they don't. But there is no way that it's a threat. Yes. Okay. And that's different than the people that Those said just the- I'm not sure and didn't have an opinion. That was four percent. Okay. So there's seven percent of people who think the government's the federal government's a threat of an immediate threat, but they, but don't, they don't know, know how. how. Yeah, I'm afraid that they're probably suffering from a certain level of paranoia, right? I mean, like if you don't, if you just perceive a threat and you don't know why you perceive a threat. Yes. Yeah, that's that's weird. That's why again, I'm it, stressing the word immediate because there probably are. And again, I I don't know the percentage, and I don't want to speculate because if you would have asked me this question three days ago of what percentage of Americans view the federal government as an immediate threat, I'd have said, I don't know. 10, 15. Yeah. So I never would have guessed nearly half. So to try to put a number on the people that think it's a threat but not an immediate threat, it's very difficult to answer. But there are some people that think, oh, well, if they don't meet that uh, spending thing and the shutdown happens in three weeks then you know that that's going to be a problem and then if they don't do this then that's going to be a problem so there are people that perceive possible threats in the future yeah i don't know it's uh i i think that for to some extent i'm heartened by this information because uh, i mean it says it shows that people understand what uh the government what the state is and i was yes. going to talk about that and i didn't quite get through it is is that i believe the state is passed down through the master servant paradigm 
even before we had the agricultural revolution, say, 10,000 years ago, um, you know, there were 200,000, between 20 and 200,000 years of humans that uh, were hunter-gatherers. I suspect we had a hunt, a master-servant paradigm going on at that point, even then, that essentially people, I mean, American Indians who were hunter-gatherers held slaves. So we can see that, uh, you know, that likely this paradigm was in play at that point. So this goes back as long as, as far back as humans go. Um, this whole idea of, I'm in charge and you'll do what I say or I'll knock you over the head with a big stick. Yes. Well, um, might makes right. Yeah, that's essentially what you've got with a republic because 50 uh, percent plus one or whoever the, the the people that won, the party that won gets to knock over the head, the party that lost. And uh, everybody else that is not a member of the party that lost that also lost. Yes. And they just keep doing it over and over again. And I think we need I mean, this is tw- 2015. We've got the Internet well, they can provide to us. All these different services, how come we can't get whatever services the government has in ways that we want to have them? I, I mean, rather than just being stuck with well, because the inefficiencies of the state. Because th- that would be anarchy, Mark. Well, that's not anarchy. That's a I know. competition in, for the areas of government. <laughs> but there have been people that have told me that if the federal government dissolved like you know it goes away washington dc the district of criminals no longer controls our lives that would be anarchy no that would be um the state government's picking up the the ball uh give us a call 1-855-450-3733 what are your thoughts on the government being a threat 855-450 free If you're like me, you're concerned about the stock market and the economy. You're asking the questions, but it just doesn't seem that you're getting the right answers. Well, my friends at the Wealth Preservation Institute not only have the answers, but they've put together a free report, How to Survive the Upcoming Economic Collapse and Protect Your 401Ks, IRA Savings, and Retirement Income. Don't hesitate. This report's for free for a limited time by calling 888-772-2929. That's 888-772-2929. Take back your financial lives today. My name is Dell, and I live in El Cajon, California. I was concerned about my cholesterol readings because I knew that high cholesterol is related to clogging of the arteries and increases the risk for heart attack and stroke. One day, I heard an ad for heart and body extract, and I was skeptical, but I decided to give it a try. Man, the numbers don't lie. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. If you have a business, you know that IT can be frustrating, but it doesn't have to be. IT can serve your needs reliably, predictably, and on time. Rootwork Infotech helps businesses achieve always on reliability. Their nerds know business and can meet your needs. To prove it, they'll give you 30 minutes on the phone with a senior consultant for free to answer any of your IT questions. Just go to rootwork.it slash FTL to get your free call. That's R-O-O-T work.it slash FTL. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. 
People are saying it could be a baby bump. Our senior celebrity correspondent, Tyler, is here. Tyler, you always have the inside dish. What's the deal? She looks like she got fat, so she might have a baby in her tummy. Oh, what else have you heard? I heard she has a boyfriend and they have sex. That's right. You know, the Hollywood couple vacationed in Rome together just two months ago. They had a big hotel room, and I can tell you what they did in it. Spill it, Tyler. He put his penis in her vagina. Hot. She is one lucky gal. And she's going crazy. Uh-oh, is stardom starting to wear on Emma? Yeah, she's crazy and dumb. She put a carrot in her vagina. Whoa, do tell. Yeah, she said, oh, this carrot's like my boyfriend's penis. I'm gonna rub it all over my vagina. I'm so gross. Then she ate it like Bugs Bunny. What a hot mess. Hey, Emma, get it together, girl. Tyler, you are breaking news as always. This is the Onion News Network. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450 free, and you can call in and, well, you can bring up whatever you want. What we've been talking about is this uh, this fascinating poll that's come out of um, Gallup. Gallup, yeah. I, I was thinking Pew at that point. There's so many different of these uh, polling organizations that says that basically half of Americans find the federal government to be a threat. Immediate. Immediate threat. And now what's interesting is, is these numbers tend to uh, waffle back and forth over the years as a Democrat or a Republican are in the White House. Not that it matters. Uh, I mean, you know, the people in the White House don't really make po uh, make the laws. They, they you know, make some policy, but right. They bec they're it's mostly Congress that winds up doing all of the horrible things and the president gets blamed for or the president gets credit for. Yep. So. Yeah, you can call in on that one, 855-450-3733. I don't know whether to be excited about this, because I don't, I guess I do consider the federal government to be a threat. It's just not a threat that scares me, you know? Um, it. I generally don't think they're going to come after me. And maybe I'm just wrong. Um, right, but the question wasn't, do you find the federal government to be a threat to your life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, or do you find the federal, or do you believe the federal government is going to, you know, like, annihilate humanity in the immediate future? The question was, do you think the federal government poses an immediate threat to the rights and freedoms of ordinary citizens? Yeah. And I don't understand how anybody could say that the federal government does not yeah that's kind of the definition of the state uh you know i mean it's an organization that uh you know threatens uh if you don't do what we say we're going to put you in a cage right and ultimately that's how it's worked up to this point and there's other options we don't have to have that particular paradigm right so the, the the government provides a variety of services, whatever those services might be in whichever government we're talking about. Could be a municipal government, could be a state government, could be the federal government. Pro provides a variety of services. Those services, you know, individually, for whatever reason, the federal government doesn't decide to distribute cars. But it does decide to distribute trash pickup. So, in most places. In most places. Um, water distribution, municipal water distribution um, in most places. There's a whole variety of things that the federal government, or that the, excuse me, not federal government, but a variety of different governments do that you can just get them out of that business. And somebody could provide it to you, uh, you know, these different things to you. I don't know what they would look like. A lot of people are worried about, say, when it comes to, in some places they have uh, a government electricity. Well, who's going to deliver the electricity? Well, the same people that deliver it when you don't have um, the, you know, the government doing it. Um, you know, lots of places in the United States that happens. Well, who's going to pick up the trash? 
the same people who pick up the trash when you don't have the, the state picking up the trash. These things don't have to be municipal um, or state-run organizations. Right. They don't have to be. Now, the federal government's a little different. What they do is, is they take... Um, you know, they, they take money away uh, from you in the form of income tax, and half of that goes to the military. Not quite. Uh, half of the discretionary right, half goes the discretionary, to the military. Yeah. You're, you're, you're excluding Medicare and uh, Social Security. That's Those are the two things that aren't included in the discretionary, right? Uh, no, some of the military spending isn't included in discretionary. There's two different federal budgets. Essentially, there's the discretionary budget and the non-discretionary. The non-discretionary is what Congress does not have the option of touching. They can't earmark for various things. So I, I've seen the actual breakdown between the non-discretionary and the discretionary. discretionary yeah. But it's somewhere around like 54% of the discretionary, meaning that's what Congress gets to play with. That's what goes to the goes military. To the military. Yeah. Let's go to the phones. We've got uh, Glenn calling in from Alabama. Glenn, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hi, y'all. Um, the statement, don't believe they're coming for me. Listen, y'all, <clears throat> these are old numbers. Um, Democracy Now!, a couple of years back, over one million U.S. citizens on the terrorist watch list. Yeah, on the terrorist watch that, list. And a lot of them are just sort of mistakes, too. Yes. Well— You've got 16 different agencies. Some have multiple lists. And basically, the way you get on it is torque off some cop. He points his finger, and that's all it takes. Yeah. Once you've been investigated, you're on it, whether yep. you like it or not. Or you and have the same name as somebody me, that did something, because I've seen stories about five-year-old kids that were on the no-fly list. Obviously, a five-year-old kid's not a terrorist. There was another one about a nun once, There, there was a guy that I worked with when I worked for the airline. You haven't been around very many five-year-olds, have you? <laughs> I, I didn't say they couldn't be terrors. <laughs> I said they're not terrorists. <laughs> There was a guy I worked with when I worked for the airline. They just haven't been armed by the U.S. government. That's the problem. <laughs> that if he did not use his middle name, he got flagged in the system. But if he used his full name, first, middle, and last, he was okay. No problem. And he worked for an airline. Yes. But he couldn't fly. If he didn't use the middle name, he got the super secret special search where they had to touch his wee-wee. Glenn? Um, I, I have my FBI file. And How do you get those? It, oh, you uh, go online with the FBI and for your request. You okay. Yeah, yeah, and and it takes it takes them a while. I had a 800 page file. Uh, I actually got 300 pages. All the names were blacked out, but the circumstances you can read and you know exactly who said what. Really. So is this they were doing interviews um, of like your sort of friends and neighbors, or um, this was uh, Listen, you know statements? we had we had we had one friend of my mom and dad's who had been friends with them since the Korean War. Okay, they would come to the house, eat mom and dad's food, and driving down the driveway, that sob would have his phone up to his ear, already calling his people, telling them every single thing that my mother and father had told them about me. <laughs> Another guy, I was best man at his wedding. He would tell Tom, Tom would tell Dick, Dick would tell Harry, Harry would be typing it into that U.S. government's control to supply Dell. Huh. Now that's the way that rolls. Wow, that's you crazy. Have a, you've got a snitch network in this country, and it's right-wing bobble thumpers. Those are the ones that are doing the snitching, is the claim? And it's not the Methodist, it's not the Presbyterians, and it's not those rascally little Episcopalians either. So it's what, Pentecostals? I'm keeping my mouth shut. I mean, I'm sitting here on Baptist? a monitor. Baptist? Yeah, just thinking. I'm sitting here on a monitored phone. I know I am, <laughs> you know. It's being um, broadcast on a hundred and some odd radio stations. Yeah. People are listening. I'm pretty sure you're being monitored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. I got gotcha. you. Um, uh, and and they swap FBI files like they swap, you know, um, uh, 
baseball swap things. bubble gum trading cards. Yo, what do you mean they swap them? Who swaps them? Who Rock. do they trade them with? The five-year-olds. They collect them like yeah. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they know. They, they know. Or they think they know all kind of stuff. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't leave the house with a battery in my cell phone because the and this goes for everyone who has any kind of a mobile phone. They will. They are constantly pinging these phones. They know. I think they can location. remotely turn them on too. I've heard. Not with the battery out of it. No, no, that would be a good trick. I've actually heard um, that there's a tiny secret battery that you oh. can't remove. Glenn, uh, good luck uh, dodging the Baptists. Um, all the best. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You never know. Hey, and if you don't have an FBI file, the surest way to get one is to file a request for your file. <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get one for sure then. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Free Talk Live. Finally fall, a time for cooler temperatures and hot deals from America's Best Value Inn. Save 20% when you book a room online at abvi.com by October 15th and stay two or more consecutive nights now through October 22nd. Plus, you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, internet, and instant rewards through our Value Club at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Fall! into savings this season at America's Best Value Inn. There comes a time when you need custom embroidered or screen printed apparel for your business, organization, or a special event. Corporate Casuals has been helping people create great looking logoed apparel for over 25 years. They can produce a single piece or thousands using name brand apparel like Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, and Hanes. Create your logo in their online embroidery design studio or upload your existing logo and they'll turn it into embroidery. Go to corporatecasuals.com slash FTL and include Include FTL in the order notes and save 5% on your order. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com. Com, enhancing health and privacy. Uh, no way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
want gold but also want to stay digital and decentralized on the Bitcoin blockchain? Anthem Vault, providing trusted, world-class vaulting, has your answer with Hayek Gold. Digital, spendable gold inspired by economist and free market philosopher F.A. Hayek. Each Hayek is worth one gram of gold and is available right now at AnthemVault.com. Sign up today at AnthemVault.com with promo code FREEDOM to earn six months of free storage and 5% off all margins for life. Hayek Gold at AnthemVault.com. Get yours today. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Five zero three seven three three. That's the number you call in order to talk about. Well, this poll that uh, has come out from. At this point, I'm Gallup. just giving up. Gallup. Gallup. Um, uh, yeah, Gallup. Uh, that says that fifty forty nine percent half of Americans find the government to be an immediate threat, and that is just a stunning number to me. I'm really I'm really quite surprised um, that. Half of Americans find the federal government to be a threat, and I one makes me wonder that you know at some point you're gonna there's there's some gonna going to be some kind of tipping point when enough Americans find their find their own federal government to be a threat. When does something change? I'm not hoping for a revolution, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hoping for things to change to become you know a better customer service oriented organization. But traditionally, in order to get a better government, one has to have a revolution. And I guess I'm a little jaded because I see polls where upwards of two thirds of Americans say that the federal government does not have the consent of the governed. And I see other polls where like 80 percent of Americans say that they're willing to vote for somebody that's not a Republican or a Democrat in the next election. And then you wind up with 90 some odd percent of people voting for Republicans and Democrats, 90 some odd percent yeah. of the people getting reelected and nothing changes and people just continue to gripe. I, I hear you, um, but that doesn't mean they don't consider the government to be a threat. And the attitude of the governed is is, is important. Let's go to, it looks like Charlie calling in from Topeka. Charlie, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Yes, good evening. Uh, I think a real case in point is, would be NDAA. Yeah, the uh, National Defense, uh, Defense Author Act. Yeah, National Defense Authorization Act. But they do one of these, I think, every year. Pretty much every year. Well, they. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's uh, uh, dangerous to uh, grant any government the uh, power to uh, uh, literally render you in the middle of the night without uh, due process without uh, access to an attorney and uh, without informing uh, your uh, your loved ones i mean you you just vanish and you could end up in uh, some uh, some uh, deep dark cell in poland so you're talking specifically about the one provision that was in the 2012 NDAA that wound up passing in like December of 2011 correct yes and I, I remember when this passed, and I remember delivering letters to my members of Congress, or at least the people in Congress that claimed to represent me. And one of the workers at, I was living in Texas at the time, Senator, I think, Cornyn's office, saying, well, no, it's specifically in that next section says that the military can't detain people. I said, yeah, true. It says that uh, this does not authorize the military to detain people that are Americans, but it says nothing about the FBI, the CIA, the DEA, any other federal agency or any state agency. And then the staffer said, wow, uh, we never thought about it like that. <laughs> and then President Obama was saying that it did not grant any new powers, <laughs> that those were all things that they already had. It was just being codified from... Uh, something that Bush had written in a memo saying you can detain anybody that you think might be an enemy, and enemy is anybody that doesn't do what we want. Right. No, I mean, no 
actual uh, probable cause. And uh, I mean, probable uh, cause is kind of out of fashion anyway. You know, I mean, the posse well, comitatus yeah. sits out. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't seem like these policing agencies have very much interest in these uh, these old Latin terms and uh, these old English common law things. It, it doesn't seem like they have much interest in them. The theory of innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, that thing is that's, that, that's not crap. existed for most of my lifetime. That is uh, you know, that is out out the window. Well, that's you know that's uh, why do they need Northcom? I'm not uh, sure what I mean, Northcom is. To track uh, Santa Claus. They, they, they like, do track Santa like Claus. Central like. Command or Southern yeah. Command. It's a, a military district. So and why would they need one for the United States? Yeah, they're talking about Northcom and SOCOM, not not NORAD. Okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether I, I would not be able to answer that question. I simply don't know what they do with them. I imagine the general in charge of that considers his job to be very important. Oh, sure, they all do. Uh, one of my biggest concerns is uh, just to use uh, the, the Bush-Gore election. Uh, when you think about it, half of the uh, registered voters voted, and it turned out so close that the uh, Supreme Court had to decide. Yep. So you're looking at a president that was elected uh, by only half of the registered voters. So that means a quarter of the people that are registered to vote yep. actually picked our leader. Yeah, that's exactly so, how it goes all, over and over again. Uh, Charlie, I appreciate the call. Thank you. And then one thing that's interesting about that 2000 election is a lot of people want to blame Ralph Nader for Al Gore losing that election. This is it. Daryl comes you, you to can, the rescue of the minor party candidate. You can only blame... Al Gore for losing that election because Al Gore lost his home state. Had Al Gore won the state of Tennessee and the electoral votes that came with winning Tennessee, Florida would not have been in play at all. It's only because Al Gore lost his home state that Florida even mattered. And there were, I believe, eight candidates not named Ralph Nader that received over 537 votes in Florida. So you could blame any of those people. I, um, you know, I, obviously Al Gore should have won his own state. But you, you think about this guy coming off of one of the most successful presidencies of my lifetime. Now, I'll admit things were different in 2000, um, the way people felt about Clinton than they do today. Yes. But, I mean, Clinton's a rock star right about now. But even his wife doesn't seem to want to get that close to him as far, uh, from a candidate uh, from a you know uh, candidate standpoint right and it's just it's really odd um that for whatever reason they just don't want to maybe maybe you can make the claim that Rush Limbaugh really did have an effect cuz he's constantly pounding on the Clinton war machine thing and in that circumstance maybe he really did affect that election um so you can you know blame it on a variety of factors i know that uh Bush, Jeb Bush worked with his, uh, I, can't, I, can't, I think she was the Secretary of State, but I can't remember what her name was off the top of my head, um, to purge the voter rolls of felons who were registered to vote, one of them being me. I was a registered felon and disallowed from voting in the, the 2000 election. Now, it wouldn't have made that big of a difference because I was going to vote for Harry Brown, not for George Bush. <laughs> but um, Blame Harry Brown! Blame Harry Brown! Uh, but... Yeah, they, you know, they they managed to make a lot of these guys. I would imagine a lot of those felons. This is just me guessing here. Were probably, um, in my experience, being in prison in Florida, were probably black guys. And uh, black guys tend to vote Democrat. Not every one of them, by any stretch of the imagination. But if you look at the the stats, it seems like you might have had. It might have made a difference. And I don't know. Um, there was a lot of hanky picky going on. Let's go to Rob calling in from Maryland. Rob, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? What's I on your mind? I just want to confirm what you, what one of you said about uh, being skeptical of this poll. I don't know, skeptical came out about uh, the government. People fear the government. No, I think they fear uh, their government, but I'm just, I'm surprised, I guess. Yeah, well, they, I, I believe people say that, but like you said, they continue to keep voting the same way. 
uh, every time, and I just think I, I don't see a lot of hope. I mean, I, I woke up 20 years ago, but I think people will continue to bend over and take it. And what woke you up? I, what's that? What woke you up? You said you woke up 20 years ago. What woke you up? Um, just what what really woke me up was um, watching the Dole Clinton debate and realizing that they had absolutely no, they totally agreed on everything and they were old <laughs> buddies. And I started to question everything then. There's one thing that they disagreed the call, on. Rob. They disagreed on speaking of themselves in third, third person, person because yeah. Bob Dole totally. Uh, agrees and supports of referring to oneself in third person. That's something that Bob Dole does a lot. And Bill Clinton never really referred to himself I as King Bill Mark Clinton. likes to do that as well. Uh, I can tell you, I don't, I don't need that Viagra. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live or LRN.FM. We're going to have Mary Ruart on here to talk uh, in just a few minutes. 855-450 free. Free Talk Live. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. There comes a time when you need custom embroidered or screen printed apparel for your business, organization, or a special event. Corporate Casuals has been helping people create great looking logoed apparel for over 25 years. They can produce a single piece or thousands using name brand apparel like Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, and Hanes. Create your logo in their online embroidery design studio or upload your existing logo and they'll turn it into embroidery. Go to corporatecasuals.com FTL and include FTL in the order notes and save 5% on your order. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, September 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.84 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,138 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $233. Antiwar.com reports Turkish warplanes have launched a new round of airstrikes against northern Iraq, as well as some other areas in southeastern Turkey. At least five PKK members were killed in the attacks inside Turkey and an unknown number of others wounded in Iraq. PKK forces also carried out ambushes against Turkish forces in southeastern Bingol, killing at least one soldier and wounding five others. The PKK forces were blocking roads in two eastern provinces and ambushed the troops as they were headed there to confront them. Turkish airstrikes against northern Iraq were extremely common during the U.S. occupation of Iraq, but had halted during the two-year ceasefire with the PKK, which was to lead to peace talks. Some PKK officials suggested that a return to ceasefire was possible initially, but were spurned by the government, which insisted that there could be no talk of ceasefire unless the PKK wholly disarmed and left the country first. The PKK is influential in the Kurdish southeast of Turkey and the 
the war has fueled military crackdowns against other Kurdish towns, adding to the tensions. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the parents of Ahmed Mohammed have hired lawyers and plan to sue over how he was treated for bringing his homemade clock to school. The 14-year-old Texan was handcuffed and taken to an Irving police station after a teacher mistook his clock for a hoax bomb, and he has become quite a celebrity, both ridiculed and regaled for his invention. His family said in a statement Wednesday they will pursue Ahmed's legal rights and regain his science project from the Irving Police Department. Charges were not filed, but after after MacArthur High School in Irving suspended the young man for three days, his parents withdrew all three of their children from the Irving School District, citing religious persecution. Now the parents have hired two high-powered Dallas attorneys, Thomas Bauer and Reggie London, to represent them. The Irving police told CNN the teen's clock is available for him to pick up. The family lawyers say they will sue because the teen has been severely traumatized and no one should be treated the way he was. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day she awoke in the redwood forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports a federal judge on Wednesday denied Kim Davis a stay of his order requiring her office to issue marriage licenses to all eligible couples who want one, the latest setback for a Kentucky clerk who went to jail rather than issue marriage licenses. Lawyers for couples suing Davis have said that since her return to work, the Rowan County clerk has interfered with the issuance of marriage licenses in violation of the orders by U.S. District Judge David Bunning in Louisville. An attorney for Davis has said she made a good faith effort to comply with Bunning's orders. She has said licenses granted by her staff are invalid because she has not given them that authority. Davis has refused to issue any marriage license since the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in June that made same-sex marriage legal across the country. Her stance has made Kentucky the latest flashpoint in the U.S. debate over same-sex marriage. Davis has said her beliefs prevent her from issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples. She has asked Bunning repeatedly to put his order requiring the issue of marriage licenses on hold hold while she appeals. Bunning said on Wednesday that without clarification, he would have left other eligible couples at the mercy of Davis's no marriage policy. On Monday, lawyers for the couples suing Davis said she had made material changes to the marriage license forms after her return to work on September 14th that left questions about their legality. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Tallahassee Zoo, which faced a major budget crisis. Luckily, they were able to get both, keep guests and animals happy, and stay profitable. And that's thanks to the zoo's new director, Maxwell Jeffries. Happy to be here. Thank Good you. Good morning. Now, what's the most profitable part of the zoo? The elephants, the tigers? No, 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 no. The gift shop, okay? Food court. But now, the entire zoo is the gift shop. So you come to the zoo, you look around, you see something you like, make me an offer. I'm a businessman. I want to make people happy. <laughs> You're probably familiar with the old saying, don't feed the animals. Oh, right, of course. Okay, well, that's old-fashioned thinking. At our zoo, you can feed the animals. Anything you want? Anything you want. Oats, eggs, batteries, you name it. <laughs> and we also uh, invented a new tiered membership system. So for your standard membership, you go to the zoo, you get to see the animals. For your gold-level membership, you get to pick any two animals, make them fight each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then with a platinum, you get one hour alone in the zoo. No wow. questions asked. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. Daryl. And Johnson. You know, there is a man who has uh, managed relatively quickly 
practically overnight to become like public enemy number one. This is Martin Screlly, and he is the CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals. Now, if these names don't ring a bell to you, he's the guy that bought the drug that raised it from like 1350 to $750 a pill. Now you know who I'm talking about. If you're plugged in any way, shape, or form, you have heard about this guy. He's got this picture, makes him look kind of smarmy and and uh, money grubbing, and he's referred to as a hedge fund guy, and just a bunch of things about uh, you know what he's done. And it's difficult to pre- defend this guy's actions, but I wanted to talk about it. It's difficult not to talk about it, but it. He, you know, when you have an expert in the field available to you, you should avail yourself of the expert. So that's yes. what I did. Um, uh, Daryl, go ahead and introduce our guest. So Dr. Mary Ruart was a presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party in 2008. And she is, I, I'm not sure if award-winning author does her justice. She's right. definitely won some awards She's not quite best-selling, but she is a very good author, and she just re-released Healing Our World. Right. This is a it's seminal. now in her four, the fourth edition of this book. I received my copy. I've not yet read the fourth edition. I have read the second and third editions of the book. Look forward to reading this. And we have Dr. Mary Ruart, who it, at one point in her life was a pharmaceutical researcher. That's right. So, Dr. Roy, are you with us? I am, Excellent. and thanks for having me. Thanks so much for, for coming on. So um, I, I noticed that you wrote an article on this, and I just wanted to talk to you about uh, what your thoughts were on Martin Screlly buying the intellectual property of this particular pill and then um, you know raising the price from 1350 to 750 well, actually, there's quite a bit of similar things going on. Older drugs that, um, you know, maybe are only made by one company now because they have a very small population of patients who need them um, are susceptible to this type of thing. Uh, for example, if, if, if a company buys uh, the rights to exclusive distribution from a company that's making such a drug, of course, they can jack the price up pretty much as high as they want. And in some cases, if the drug wasn't approved after 1962, they can actually go back and do the FDA studies that were required after 1962 under the Orphan Drug Act. Okay. And if they get an approval, then the FDA will actually grant them a monopoly for several years. So there's a lot of generic, old generic drugs for small patient populations that are now getting very highly priced. And there are some that, you know, really are having this kind of a markup. So, you know, when uh, Turing's CEO said that this wasn't unusual. He was unfortunately correct. This has been happening a lot. So this is the promised uh, innovation in the area of drugs uh, d- distribution and drug uh, manufacture that we were promised with intellectual property, um, right? Well, you know, <laughs> I don't think actually his his drug is covered under patents anymore. It's an old drug. It came out in the 50s. Okay. So um, what, and and I don't know that he's taken it through this process that I just described. I haven't been able to find evidence of that. The Orphan Drug Act. Yeah, but some people think he may have done that, and I haven't been able to dig that information out yet. But even if he hadn't, he would still be in a great position because if somebody wants to compete with them, which they probably would if they saw that price, they still have to jump through FDA hoops. They still have, for their generic 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 Yes, even as a generic, you have to show that it's equivalent to what's already on the market. Oh. Now, that's not impossible. It's done all the time with generics, but the problem is it is costly and it takes a few years. And so, by isn't the it t- also limited by the fact that there's so few people that actually have this condition well, to test see, on? That's- Yes, that's the problem. So even if you went and did those studies and showed the FDA that, yes, your product is equivalent, you might not be able to make up your cost because it's such a small number of people, especially since the original person, for example, 
Turing could undercut you as soon as you got to market just to drive you out of business, sure. you know. And you might if and and you might not be able to capture any of the market share because you're not first to market. Being first to market is very important in the pharmaceutical industry. And this is not the first time that the price has gone up somewhat drastically for this particular drug. This That's drug right. Doraprim was bought by another pharmaceutical company a few years ago, and the price went from one dollar to thirteen dollars and fifty cents. It's a big. That's right. That's right. And this is happening to a lot of generics. You know, this is happening quite a bit to drugs that aren't used that much, but are very important to the patient population. You know that they do serve. And I'm seeing here in the article that you wrote, and we've posted it on the Facebook page for anybody that wants to find the article, you say that when that happened, when it went from $1 to $13.50 per pill, the number of prescriptions dropped about 30%. Mm -hmm. What was being used instead of this to treat toxoplasmosis? Well, my understanding is that this drug is used in conjunction with some other ones. And my suspicion, I don't know this for sure because I haven't talked to the doctors who dropped their patients off this or didn't use it anymore, but they may simply have used the other few drugs. And there may be some more out there that actually work that doctors are aware of. So, you know, they may, or they may have just gone without. In some cases, that's probably what happened. So um, at this point, this isn't an issue of him being protected by intellectual property. This is an issue of competitors being kept out of the marketplace by, uh, by the FDA's uh, rules as far as getting a drug in, in play. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Even like I said, even if he went through this process that some people think he might have and did studies on it so that he would, you know, get in under the Orphan Drug Act and get this um, – special monopoly period. Obviously, it's not a patent monopoly. It's a regulatory monopoly. So that's, you know, either way, I don't think it's an intellectual property type of uh, problem. So and I've got a question. In one of the interviews that I watched with him, he, he talked about how his company would not be turning anyone away and, and generally... Well, uh, he's been giving this away to yeah, people. gives it away for free. Well, how, what I wonder is how true is that? You know, like if these... If he's this just is going about, after insurance companies, isn't he? I would expect that that would be true, but at seven hundred fifty dollars, I mean, I don't even know if uh, you know with copays and whatnot, how much of this is covered. No, nope. couldn't say. Mary? No, it's well, you know, the I think a course of this um, therapy is somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple months to maybe a few more months. So, and I believe it's a daily dose. So, you know, you can kind of get a feel for how much it would cost. Yes. And the numbers, yeah, the numbers we're talking about in terms of prescriptions, I don't think that includes hospital use. So, you know, hospitals, of course, probably get it at a much cheaper price. There's a, and you know, Medicare and Medicaid, they, I'm sorry, Medicaid at least, I don't know about Medicare. Medicaid gets it at a much cheaper price too. So it's hard to say, how much you know actually is being sold at seven fifty? Yeah, it's uh, in many ways this is. Um, it, it seems like they're just sort of vilifying this guy in order to. Uh, um, I mean, because what they're making it seem like is is that he's charging the poorest of the poor people seven hundred and fifty dollars for a pill, which doesn't seem to be entirely true. It seems like it's the insurance companies who. And the insurance companies get their premiums from us, so essentially it's distributing the cost amongst everybody inside of, that has an insurance policy, which at this point is supposed to be everybody. So to some well, extent, this is almost a tax. Yes. I mean, in a way, when you think about it, this drug has been selling for very little for a long time. And a few years ago, then, as you mentioned, it went up to 1350 It was still, you know, because of the short term of treatment and because it usually helps produce a cure, you know, that was still within the realm. Uh, I think the 750 is is getting a little on the high side. Sounds like it's high to me. Dr. Brewer, I'd hold the line yeah. if you would. 855-450-3733 if you've got questions for Dr. Ruart to, or to talk about Dara Prem. Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. 
I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. No! That's the sound your brain makes when you realize you're buying something and forgot the coupon. Online or in a store, knowing that you're missing a deal is the worst. You need the app from Retail Me Not right now. Get thousands of coupons from 50,000 stores like Kohl's, Domino's, Best Buy, and more with crazy deals like 60% off, free shipping, and free gifts with purchase. You can get a text invite to download the Retail Me Not app 100% free right now for Apple or Android. Just text the code UPDATE to 42767. Then just show your phone at checkout to save. It literally couldn't be easier. It's 2015. Keep your coupon bonds in your phone. Stop what you're doing and text UPDATE to 42767. Listeners will get a text with a link to download it 100% free. Never forget another coupon again. Text the code UPDATE to 42767 right now. That's UPDATE to 42767. Message and data rates may apply. For terms and privacy, visit RetailMeNot.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Blake developed Development.net is a global leader in website creation, app development, and online marketing, catering to businesses of all sizes. There's really no job too big or too small for BlakeDevelopment.net. Do you have an idea for a killer app, but you don't know how to code it? Are you missing out on online sales? Or maybe your business needs help with social media. Websites start at just 200 bucks, and they're offering three years of free domain registry. Yes, they take Bitcoin. 844-SITE-123. BlakeDevelopment.net, 844-SITE-123. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. The number is 603-513-2228. No, it's not. What'd I give? <laughs> I've lost you just my mind. gave a number that you do not want people to call. That's right. Well, th you call this one instead. 855-450-FREE. Eight, <laughs> eight or you can use, well, you can't right now because we got Dr. Ruard on uh, Skype. So you're going to have to call us at 855-450-3733. <laughs> and what now that you've said all that, you're going to have to go in and edit that out of there. <laughs> What, uh, YouTube and everything else. What we talk about, uh, what we've been talking about here is, is in fact, the uh, Martin the, Shkreli. Yeah, the Martin Shkreli situation where this uh, hedge fund guy buys up uh, this drug uh, called Duraprim and 
then uh, hikes the price from $13 to $750. And rather than just having us talk about it, we brought on the, the, the preeminent uh, voice in the Liberty community who also happens to have been a uh, drug researcher in the past. It's Dr. Ruart, who, by the way, just released her uh, fourth edi- edition of Healing Our World, and um, I'm, I'm really excited about it. So, Dr. Ruart, you, you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Excellent. So we were talking about, uh, you know, pricing and this sort of thing. So you don't think the $750 per pill on this, uh, this drug is, um, is particularly crazy as far as the, the marketplace goes? Well, the marketplace, remember, has been warped by the cost of FDA regulations. Yeah. I mean, if you were putting out a brand new drug, it would cost you over a billion dollars out of pocket. If you wanted to count all the 12 some years that it took you to get there, you know, and capitalized it, it would be twice that. So it's just outrageous. And then and then what happened? So so this particular uh, company isn't doing anything that isn't permitted by law. But what's what's permitted is made possible by these regulations. So yeah. this is not about, as I say in the title to my blog, it's not, it's not, is it corporate greed or excessive regulation or both? And quite honestly, it's both. Yeah. As a matter of fact, people can go over to ruart.com and see that. Uh, that's R-U-W-A-R-T, ruart.com. Do you have a, a solution to this? How would you, how would you go about uh, solving it? I've seen your speeches on, um, you know, the problems the FDA brings into the area of uh, drug uh, creation. Yes, we need to move from a system of drug approvals and and regulation in that manner to a certification process. You know, the FDA doesn't test any drugs. Most people think they do. All they do is they tell the pharmaceutical firms what tests to run, and then they look over their data. There's no third party involved. But we used to have third party testing. Right. A lot of people think that, right? The FDA walks with a bunch of guys walking around in white coats. They're uh, testing drugs to make sure that everything's fine. They're a big drug testing organization. They don't do any of that. And there's a lot of people that think that the FDA goes into all of the food plants and does tests. Because without the FDA, Mark, you would eat tainted bacon. (laughs) <laughs> well, and, and it's it's kind of gotten worse since 1992 because the Prescription Drug User Fee Act has got the drug companies paying a user fee, at least that's what they're calling it, uh, to have their uh, data reviewed. And right now, the part of the FDA that reviews this data gets about 50% of their money from the pharmaceutical companies. So, you know, if you think about the conflict of interest involved there, it's huge. And and before that, uh, the FDA mostly got its money from Congress. Now, you might say, well, that's, you know, it's, it's our money coming from Congress. And of course it is in reality, but that's not how the FDA looked at it. It wanted to please Congress and Congress beat up on it every time there was any side effect. And every drug has a side effect. So the FDA was in a really impossible situation. So what they did is they dragged out the whole testing and approval process. So it went from like four and a half years in the early 1960s to about 14 years in the 2000s. And now I think it's back down to 12. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's terrible. You know, there are drugs right now that could solve all kinds of problems that we don't even know about. And they're 12 years from getting to market. Or worse, they never get to market because what happens is the drug company realizes that if it has a brand new drug to cure a disease that nobody's cured before, it has a tough time because it doesn't know what dose it needs, it doesn't know how long to run the studies, how many patients. So if it makes a mistake and has to repeat studies that take years, the patent may be expired by the time it gets to market and it goes generic the first day and they lose a lot of money. So, you know, there's there's a lot of drugs that never make it to market. Um, I was working on one for liver disease and the FDA called me up personally to say, oh, we're going to help you get this drug to market because there's nothing for liver disease. You know, we want you to be able to put this drug on the market. But the reasoning I just described really killed it because the company realized that it would be off patent by the time we got out if we didn't do everything right the first time. The FDA is killing people. Yeah, basically. And, and, but either by waiting for drugs, killing innovation, and then the other thing is keeping inexpensive prevention basically a secret. 
I mean, we knew, for example, folic acid, a B vitamin, would prevent uh, spina bifida and other birth defects way back in the early 80s. But the FDA told the folic acid companies if they advertised this, that, you know, they would um, shut them down because they hadn't jumped through all the regulatory hoops. No, right. they can't they? say that water cures dehydration. That is exactly right. I actually, as an expert witness, testified to that one time. It's insane. <laughs> um, yes. So what you were saying that there should be a certification process. What should that That's look right. like? Well, you know, what should happen is third parties should test the drugs themselves. You know, obviously, talking to the pharmaceutical firms, if the FDA is still around at that point, no problem talking to them. But basically what certification does is it says, okay, this is our opinion of the drug, you know, and so doctors, you know, this is what it's about. And you make the decision, uh, doctor, and you make the decision patient if you want to use this drug. So it's always up to the people who have to actually experience the side effects of the drug. That makes a patient. heck of a lot more sense. Yes. And, you know, cancer patients actually sued the FDA for the right to take drugs that had been tested in humans for safety, but not for effectiveness. And they did it on the grounds that the Constitution guarantees them a right to life and that, uh, you know, they should be able to do this. And the courts ruled that, no, in fact, there was no constitutional right for for you to save your life with unapproved drugs. Yeah, it's, this fascinates me where they can uh, really justify keeping drugs from terminally ill patients. They're going to die. What do you care if they uh, the drug might be dangerous for them? In this circumstance, we're not even talking about it being dangerous, just being ineffective. But even if it was, who cares? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're talking about terminally ill people. Yes. Well, the arguments that have been used is that if if patients can take such drugs, then no one will want to enroll in the clinical trial and you'll never know if it works or not. But the thing they're missing there is that every drug works. And the reason every drug works is because there's always a placebo effect. <laughs> and, you know, I don't think cancer patients care if they're cured by a drug effect or a placebo effect. I imagine they don't. Dr. Ruart, thank you so much for uh, coming on and uh, enlightening us on this uh, topic. It's ruart.com in order to see the article. And uh, where do people go to get Healing Our World's fourth edition? They can go to the same place. Ruart.com, R-U-W-A-R-T.com. Dr. Mary Ruart, thank you so much. Thank you. 855-450, free, free talk live. Uh, no way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? They found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. A revolution in body protection has arrived only at FortressSurvivalLLC.com. Introducing the revolutionary patented Level 3 Bulletproof Vest. 100% Kevlar, 100% American made. Concealable, fully adjustable, and the lowest price on the market. Adult size normally $289.99, now just $250. Kid size normally $239.99, now just $200. Get affordable protection with a Level 3A Bulletproof Vest from FortressSurvivalLLC.com. For thou art my rock in my fortress. Psalm 31.3. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense, they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm going to tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. 
In early trading Thursday, gold is up $18 at $1,149 per ounce. Silver is 24 cents higher at $15.08 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at 232 US dollars. The prospect for getting ahead on Silver American Eagles looks bad, but we have plenty of maples, spiders, and Britannias in stock. Give us a call, 800-874-9760, or visit us online at rrbi.co. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. The call-in numbers are 855-450-3733 if you want to talk about, well, Americans, uh, half of which polled, uh, say that they believe that the government is an immediate threat to their uh, their, their future. Uh, immediate threat? What's, what's the terminology? Rights and liberties. To their rights and liberties. Or if you want to talk about this... Uh, Kind of skeevy fella that bought the rights to Duraprim that's uh, been all in the news. We had Dr. Ruart, uh, Dr. Mary Ruart on to discuss that. I've still got an unanswered question about this, and it's one that I know that Dr. Ruart could not answer because it, uh, it's basically applying motives to this Martin Shkreli guy. He said that he had to raise the price because it wasn't profitable at the price it was. As a business person, why would you buy something that is not profitable? Yeah, I I don't at this point I think that the guy is in full on uh damage control mode. So when people are in that mode, it's difficult to believe the things that they say. So that's what I would say regarding that. Um you know, he seemed pretty smarmy early on when he was talking about raising the price. Hey, look what I'm doing. Now he's talking about reinvesting that in order to uh find cures for this particular disease. I yeah, I imagine that they will be doing that. But uh, if people don't understand that that's what the free market does, then um, I guess that's uh, that's on them. But nonetheless, one thing you can count on is the government bureaucrats won't uh, take their budgets and stuff like that and spend it on a bunch of strippers and blow. Right, Johnson? Right. Um, sorry, I'm having some trouble here bringing up uh, my story, so <laughs> you're going to have to uh, keep talking there for a minute. Well, <laughs> apparently, um, some folks from the Pentagon, it looks like they, they, you know, every one of the government agencies, they get a budget for putting on events. People have to go places. They have to have conventions. Uh, that's certainly something that's done in the industry. Um, and in, in many industries, um, I'm going to be going to a convention here uh, shortly uh, for you know ad sales and that sort of thing. Are you going to 
put in an expense report to cover your trip out to the bunny ranch? Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Uh, my wife is going with me. I don't think she's going to find that to be an acceptable expense. The bunny ranch women will service couples. I've watched Cat House. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if by you service, pay them enough, they'll service pretty much anybody. If, if by service you mean getting beaten within an inch of their life, then I suppose that might be servicing. Yeah, uh, no, no that, that's not what, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Let's just put that to bed <laughs> right away. <laughs> that's where you generally would go with a prostitute. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's unless you know there, there's a couch on a floor. Johnson, you ever get the article? Sure, I do. <laughs> so uh, apparently the Pentagon has a watchdog called the Pentagon Inspector General. Oh, my. And it is investigating whether U.S. military personnel tried to get the U.S. government to pay them back for bills that they racked up at casinos and strip clubs using official travel charge cards. In May, the Pentagon watchdog reported that the Defense Department employees spent $952,258 at casinos and other, and another $96,576 at adult entertainment establishments using cards during a year-long period. So, so they have these credit cards. Yep. They've spent about a million dollars. Over a million dollars. In gambling and a million dollars in strippers. Uh... No. Uh, okay. It's combined it's a million dollars. It's um it's essentially almost a million at casinos and about a tenth of that at adult ent- entertainment establishments. Oh, okay, I see. I got the the numbers mixed up a little bit. Which could be, you know, like both, you know, brothels and uh strip porn clubs, shops, strip clubs you know, yeah. Porn shops. I mean, adult entertainment establishments, who knows. Yeah. Maybe it's nudie theaters i don't know um anyway you just don't give the government bureaucrats the credit card (laughs) and tell them that they can you know expense stuff now do we know if this investigation is in any way connected with the investigation that happened earlier in the year that revealed dea fbi atf and u.s marshals were involved in sex parties with prostitutes it could very well be a spinoff of that. I'm not entirely certain. Um, it goes on to say the Inspector General's office in a September 21st memorandum released on Wednesday said that the Senate and Armed Services Committee requested a follow-on investigation. Our objective is to determine whether Defense Department cardholders who used government travel cards at casinos and adult entertainment establishments for personal use sought or received reimbursement for the charges, the memo said. So, so we don't know whether they sought reimbursement. They just used the cards. Um, correct. They definitely used the cards, but they, they're investigating to find out whether or not they were actually like paid back or yeah. those charges. So the memorandum also said that the investigation— So now let me get—so the cards, are they sent to the employee? The bill is sent to the employee, or the employee has to— you know, is like if this was gasoline for their personal car, right? Likely it would have been no one be, would be having a conversation about this unless they weren't ex, um, they, they weren't expensing it in the manner that they were supposed to, right? I'm not sure how that works because if it's a card for the if it's like a company card, how was there any reimbursement needed? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's it's probably my, my guess is the company probably has a card. And they would say, Johnson, here's your card. Use this for all of your purchases. That way, everything's in one spot. Mm-hmm. And then you tell us what winds up being business expense. That way, you're not having to, oh, here's my credit card for this, and here's my card for that. You've got everything all on one card. And then you just say line one, three, seven, and 12 were personal. Everything else was business. That's extremely strange. <laughs> It is odd because then you get paid back for the personal stuff. I mean, or, no, or, you only get you have well, to pay you have out to of pay pocket for the, personal, right, right, for right. the personal, and they pay off whatever was not. Seems strange. Well, they are you are getting your paycheck from them, so uh, they right. could just uh, remove the expenses that you that were personal stuff uh, from your paycheck before right. they give it to you. Yep. Yeah. Very I bizarre. can't imagine how they would do it. It's it's uh you know usually these things are handled by third parties like paychecks.com right. or something right. like that. The, so this the, is federal government. They've got the Department of Treasury to figure that out. Yeah. yeah so the memorandum also said that the investigation would look into whether disciplinary action was taken in cases of personal use. In the May report, the inspector general noted 
uh, one case where a member of the Air Force was demoted after spending $4,686 at Sapphire Gentlemen's Club in Las Vegas, Nevada. The airman tried to spend an additional $920, but had already exceeded his credit limit, the airport mm. said. More! <laughs> he just is like, I'm going to keep running the card. Uh, <laughs> yeah, once, once, once you get rolling in those situations, <laughs> make oh it rain. <laughs> the U.S. Defense Department has about 1.6 million card holders, which are meant to use the cards for official travel related expenses only. During the year of the audit from July 1st, 2013 to June 30th, 2014, cardholders racked up transactions totaling $3.4 billion. Wow. That's billion with a B. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Well, they must be doing a lot of travel. That's a lot of frequent flyer miles. <laughs> Indeed. And a lot of whatever points that they offer at those clubs. Yes, they give uh, whatever those clubs <laughs> offer. <laughs> You know, um, I wouldn't say that this is something that's going to be uh, just the Pentagon, right? Like, I, I'm not looking at this and saying, aha, we got the Pentagon. I'd say that this is likely to be a situation that's, uh, well, frankly, this is likely from human beings. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> this is amazing. So on a whim from this article, I decided to click the link to see what the Inspector General U.S. Department of Defense report looked like. And this is what it looked like. I'm showing you guys, but I'm going to describe it and read it here on the air. So it's very well designed uh, graphically. And it shows a picture of the White House and a picture of the Pentagon with an overlay of text and like a blue gradient. And uh, the text says... DOD cardholders use their government travel cards for personal use at casinos and adult entertainment establishments. That's the title of the report by the inspector general for people to read. <laughs> it sounds like something that a high schooler would put together. Are you surprised? Are you shocked? <laughs> uh, are you upset that uh, government bureaucrats are using their uh, cards to buy strippers? And the following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Pure, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-717-9859. The revolutionary Pure design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no nasty tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love whenever and wherever they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Pure. Again, free starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-717-9859. 1-800-717-9859. 1-800-717-9859. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. The human body is more than 60% water. Your brain and muscles are 75% water. And your blood is 92% water. Water is vital to your body, and alkalizing your water is the key to keep it running at its best. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops keep your entire body healthy, boosts energy, promotes weight loss, and even fights cancer. Call 800-518-7615 or go to AlkaVision.com to find out more. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. 
That includes access to the Hello Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Looks like government agents are wasting your tax dollars. Well, you knew that. Well, maybe it's maybe it might upset you that they're wasting your tax dollars on gambling. Well, maybe it might upset you that they're wasting your tax tax dollars on strippers. Maybe it might upset you that they're wasting your tax dollars on hookers. Well, this is all happening, and I I, I guess I I just I'm just unsurprised. This doesn't. Oh yeah, well you know that makes perfectly good sense. You give these people credit cards, you're ultimately going to have stuff like this happen. This is an issue of the power that is given to them, not uh, not that this is surprising to me. It's Mark with you. Daryl. And Johnson. 855-450-3733. You can comment on it. 855-450-FREE. I told you I was going to tell you how to get some Bitcoin in order to take advantage of the big savings at purse.freetalklive.com or save at purse.com. We actually got another URL for it. And to get the best prices on Bitcoin, the place to go is ExpressCoin.com. They've got Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies there. They make it fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business. It doesn't matter whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. They can help you get uh, the best prices on Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies. As a matter of fact, if, if you use coupon code FTL and get under $40 worth of uh, your favorite cryptocurrency, you won't pay any fee at all. Zero fee. Now, the fees are very reasonable. These are the, among the best in the business. But ExpressCoin.com, you go there, you use coupon code FTL, and save. All right. So, Daryl, apparently this happened with some uh, DEA agents previously? Well, we don't know, or at least the article and the report don't, specify whether they used their government credit cards for hookers but some dea agents that were down in columbia definitely had sex parties with prostitutes and according to the report the prostitutes were hired and provided for by the drug cartels okay hold on dea agents drug enforcement agency drug enforcement agency agents had Sex parties. Sex parties with car- cartel hookers? Uh, don't know if the prostitutes were members of the cartel, but they were paid for and supplied by the cartel. It and makes you the think parties th- happened in the agent's quarters where they kept the files on their investigations. You know what I've heard? I've heard that women have been used in the past to, say, secure information from um, sometimes male agents. And things like that. Do you think that might have happened in this circumstance? It's entirely possible. It's certainly likely. I I can't imagine the drug cartels are just throwing parties for DEA agents without intending to get something about it. Something go, uh, you know, some some kind of benefit out of it. 
Well, the benefit is you're throwing a party for the DEA and they're not likely to arrest you because then who would throw the party? Yeah, that's a good question. If you arrest the guy throwing the party, who throws the party? And, Nobody. That's who. And I remember the the Secret Service agents from, what has it probably been about a year ago that they were yeah. down in? Maybe it was Columbia. And I think it was the same thing. They were like out drinking real heavy and hookers and the you know the the files were right there and they had big important stuff to do later and yeah so the article here that i have it's actually from march of this year and they say that 10 of the dea agents later admitted to attending the parties and some of the agents received suspensions of two to ten days you're kidding me a week and a half was the top suspension for one of these dea agents that was literally screwing people instead of doing their job. This is, well, no, it's not just that, though. This is essentially the opposite of what they were hired to do. Yes. They are, but I would rather them do this than what they were hired no, to do. N- well, uh, <sighs> what they're hired to do is ruin people's lives, Mark. They're I still would rather doing them that. have sex with a prostitute. Ridiculous. They're still ruining people's lives. They're just doing it while protecting their job and this this cartel that threw them the party. Now they're a bought rogue agent. These people should not have been uh, suspended for two to ten days. They should have been incarcerated for two to ten years. Yeah, I, I would probably agree with that as well. These are rogue agents. The article, what else would you call them? The, the article says the stunning allegations are part of an investigation by the Justice Department Inspector General into claims of sexual harassment and misconduct within the DEA, FBI, ATF, and the U.S. Marshals. And now we know that the Pentagon had some impropriety as well. Don't know if it was because of this investigation that they decided looking into that or not. There is a congressional committee charged with federal oversight, and they are promising hearings and an investigation. So is this the liberal media we're told about? Is this the uh, the statist media we're told about? Told about somehow or another, this uh, the media uncovered these uh, you know these situations, and we're finding out the government is full of corrupt people, which is just this is just normal sort of corruption. Um, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying. Huh, what a surprise. If if the uh, DEA, the Pentagon, and whatever was full of ladies, I'm sure you'd be able to find ways to corrupt them, too, that didn't have to do with hookers and strippers. I, I suppose you might be, you know, there might be an instance where the Chippendales are, are brought in. You but send in Channing Tatum and the women are going to go crazy. Not sure who that is. He's an actor guy. I only know the name because I've heard women talk about how hot he is. Okay. Otherwise, I have no clue. I I could not tell you anything the guy's been in. I just know the ladies love him. Yeah. So I think that this is just, this is what you should expect when you give people these big, sweet jobs and you ask the government to fix your problems like the drug war. Now, let let me give you some more information on this, Mark. The parties reportedly took place from 2005 to 2008, but the DEA's Office of Professional Responsibility did not become aware of them until 2010 after it received an anonymous complaint. And here we are in 2015, and these guys are finally getting their punishment of a week and a half vacation. I'm sure they've learned their lesson. A week yes, and a half. the lesson is to cover your tracks better when you have sex with a Colombian prostitute paid for by the Colombian drug cartel. I wonder if they found out if uh, they, the DEA had any success in tracking down anybody from these cartels in this meantime, or were they completely protected? Uh, my guess is completely protected. The oh, yeah, article does say that the local police allegedly provided protection for the DEA agents' weapons and properties during the parties. Yeah. So the local cops were in on making sure that this thing went down without any problems. Yeah, I I, I imagine they're paid off too, right? Yes. That's uh, the likelihood here. I don't know, man. I guess this is just what you can expect. This is what was going on during prohibition um, of alcohol prohibition, but this was go this is going on in the Pentagon where there has nothing to do with prohibition, right? I mean, right. this is just in just. 
them doing what they do. And if the punishment doesn't come down, they're going to continue to do it. Yeah, and when the punishment is you get a vacation for a week and a half, they're going to continue to do it so they get another vacation for a week and a you half. Know, it's kind of iron- ironic that you brought up Channing Tatum considering he was in the 21 Jump Street films, which are about two rogue cops. Never <laughs> saw it. No, they were very funny. I vaguely recall the television show from back in the 80s. That was terrible. Uh, I, 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 well, it wasn't then. <laughs> I didn't say it wasn't terrible. I said I vaguely recall it. I thought it was terrible. I thought it was great, but... But I was also... It was probably, you know, above my age yeah. at that point. You you time. just wanted to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at Actually, the time. Actually, yes, probably. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, that whatever, your older sibling or whatever was watching this and you were upset. But Channing Tatum was also in Jupiter Ascending... You Never that, saw it. Uh, that one, and uh, I did. It was great. He was but in Mila the... Kunis is in Jupiter Ascending. Correct. Yes. And there's somebody that I share a birthday with that is dating Mila Kunis right now. Well, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher. Me and Ashton Kutcher have the exact same birthday. He what? hooked up with Demi Moore and Mila Kunis, and I'm sitting here with you two schlubs. I'm trying to figure out why you're using airtime to talk about who has the same birthday <laughs> as you. <laughs> Congratulations on survival. Your birthday is completely <laughs> inconsequential to, to frankly, everything. I mean, it's just a bit. It, it's a well, it, you know, Mark. Date. I share a birthday with Juliette Lewis and Carol O'Connor. <laughs> Carol O'Connor being the actor who played um, Meathead. No, the the guy who would call him Meathead, Archie Daddy. Bunker. Archie Bunker. Or, me, yeah. Meathead's father. In-law. Yeah, I like that one better, Daryl. Go, go, yeah, find, go find some old crusty meathead. old man that you share it with. I prefer that. This meathead's talking about his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Stifle Edith. So come on, Mark. Who, whose birthdays do you share? I have no clue. <laughs> I, I mean, this I is free talk live. I sometimes it's I go the show about anything. I sometimes I'll go the whole day of my birthday and forget that it happened because I don't care. <laughs> Everything that happens to me is more important than my birthday. Free talk live. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, September 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.84 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,138 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $233. 
Antiwar.com reports Turkish warplanes have launched a new round of airstrikes against northern Iraq as well as some other areas in southeastern Turkey. At least five PKK members were killed in the attacks inside Turkey and an unknown number of others wounded in Iraq. PKK forces also carried out ambushes against Turkish forces in southeastern Bengal, killing at least one soldier and wounding five others. The PKK forces were blocking roads in two eastern provinces and ambushed the troops as they were headed there to confront them. Turkish airstrikes against northern Iraq were extremely common during the U.S. occupation of Iraq, but had halted during the two-year ceasefire with the PKK, which was to lead to peace talks. Some PKK officials suggested that a return to ceasefire was possible initially, but were spurned by the government, which insisted that there could be no talk of ceasefire unless the PKK wholly disarmed and left the country first. The PKK is influential in the Kurdish southeast of Turkey, and the war has fueled military crackdowns against other Kurdish towns, adding to the tensions. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the parents of Ahmed Mohammed have hired lawyers and plan to sue over how he was treated for bringing his homemade clock to school. The 14-year-old Texan was handcuffed and taken to an Irving police station after a teacher mistook his clock for a hoax bomb, and he has become quite a celebrity, both ridiculed and regaled for his invention. His family said in a statement Wednesday they will pursue Ahmed's legal rights and regain his science project from the Irving Police Department. Charges were not filed, but after after MacArthur High School in Irving suspended the young man for three days, his parents withdrew all three of their children from the Irving School District, citing religious persecution. Now the parents have hired two high-powered Dallas attorneys, Thomas Bauer and Reggie London, to represent them. The Irving police told CNN the teen's clock is available for him to pick up. The family lawyers say they will sue because the teen has been severely traumatized and no one should be treated the way he was. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day she awoke in the redwood forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports a federal judge on Wednesday denied Kim Davis a stay of his order requiring her office to issue marriage licenses to all eligible couples who want one, the latest setback for a Kentucky clerk who went to jail rather than issue marriage licenses. Lawyers for couples suing Davis have said that since her return to work, the Rowan County clerk has interfered with the issuance of marriage licenses in violation of the orders by U.S. District Judge David Bunning in Louisville. An attorney for Davis has said she made a good faith effort to comply with Bunning's orders. She has said licenses granted by her staff are invalid because she has not given them that authority. Davis has refused to issue any marriage license since the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in June that made same-sex marriage legal across the country. Her stance has made Kentucky the latest flashpoint in the U.S. debate over same-sex marriage. Davis has said her beliefs prevent her from issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples. She has asked Bunning repeatedly to put his order requiring the issue of marriage licenses on hold hold while she appeals. Bunning said on Wednesday that without clarification, he would have left other eligible couples at the mercy of Davis's no marriage policy. On Monday, lawyers for the couples suing Davis said she had made material changes to the marriage license forms after her return to work on September 14th that left questions about their legality. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Quiet and reserved temp Kevin Bright surprised his co-workers this week when they discovered that the mild-mannered 27-year-old was actually an untalented singer-songwriter. How did I get here? It's probably a dream. 
Bright, who mostly keeps to himself at work, usually spends his free time embarrassing himself at open mics across the city, and that underneath his meek and soft-spoken exterior is a terrible guitarist with no musical sensibility whatsoever. You see him in the office, he's this quiet, reserved kid, and you would never think, oh, he's got a great voice and a wonderful stage presence, and you'd be totally right. In other news, an Ohio Film Festival graphic designer decides to go with film reels for the O's, and getting grandma into a family reunion t-shirt is a three-person job. The entire 144-minute cut of this week's review is available now for just $11.99 on Laserdisc. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You know, it's Mark with you, by the way. Daryl. And Johnson. You don't learn how to be an overnight success on too many radio programs. With Free Talk Live, we can give you that information. Apparently, there's a very easy way to be a success. Johnson. Tuck in your shirt at work. Tuck in your shirt at work. Yes. According according to a new study. Yep, sure uh, enough, mine's untucked. This is the key Yours to happiness. Is untucked. That's correct. There I'm not at work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. not at work. Uh, you know, there are radio guys that they probably still do, but back in the day, radio guys would wear like ties and stuff to work. Right. Um, you know, they'd go and with a jacket and a tie and, and sunglasses. Leave their uh, fedora hung on the door or whatever. I think, uh, what's his name? There's that one uh, real bombastic Tom something or other, uh, Tom Likas. Yeah. I think he doesn't, he still, I think he he does the whole suit thing and sunglasses while he's on the radio still. I don't, uh, he's not on the radio anymore. He's on a podcast. Oh, so. he's done? Oh, he, he did the, he's made the switch now? Yeah, he made the switch completely. He really loves it and, uh, you know, it says everything's better than ever. Oh, great. Well, it's a recent survey of 1,000 men, so it's not not a <laughs> not a, a groundbreaking size. survey, but a good size. It's a good size. When, when the tab. public polling places do their uh, surveys, they generally do about 1,000 people. Right. So a survey of uh, men ages 25 to 60 found that 60% of the shirt tuckers are happier on the job. They're also... 22% more likely to be optimistic about their future. So hold on. So 60% there um of shirt tuckers are happy. Yeah, uh, they're with, happier on the job. Happier with on the job, okay. They're also 22% more likely to be optimistic about their future. So 22% more likely mm-hmm. than a non-tucker right. to be um, optimistic. Uh, maybe that's just because the kind of job where you have to tuck your shirt in um, is the kind of job you'd be more optimistic maybe, about. Maybe, but they, no, also, they no. also earn 19% more money than the slouchy non-tuckers. All right, so I want to sort of give my perspective here because I've had a wide-ranging uh, array of jobs. And I would say that the vast majority of them have been things where I've been required to tuck in my shirt. Uh-huh. And several of them have been jobs where it would be about 75 to 80 percent of the people that were not happy or optimistic about anything. But they, they still were working their... there because they needed a job and this was the only place that would hire them. And they were still tucking their shirt in. Because that was the rule. You tuck in your shirt when you're washing cars. You tuck in your shirt when you're loading bags on the airplane. You tuck in your shirt when you're cleaning the floors of Target. You tuck in your shirt when you're a security guard. Well, I wonder if the survey had to perform a place, be performed at a place where people had the choice. I, I I would I think know. not if they're just uh, going with a thousand men. Maybe I don't know. Right, Apparently but like women, they, there were some people at the airline that they would not tuck in their shirt. They'd well, get yelled at and they'd get a write up. There's an interesting another part of this statistic. They also have more dates. Apparently, the survey found. How do you think about that, Daryl? Oh. Huh? I can tell you that uh, <laughs> I've worked at jobs where I had to tuck my shirt in, and worked at jobs where I didn't have to tuck my shirt in, and I got more dates at the shirt tucking jobs. I mean, at the actual job themselves. <laughs> well, that too, <laughs> or, or just during the time period which you were working that job. Honestly, um, you know, things were pretty good for me. We'd go uh, when I worked at uh, Clear Channel, which is now iHeartRadio. Um, oftentimes, we'd go out for cocktails after uh, after work, and going 
being able to undo that top button and have a, a tie with a press shirt on, or what was a press shirt when I got to put it on in the morning, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, has those kind of work creases in it at that point, uh, was all, it, it seemed to be a very effective way to have a better chance of talking to a young lady. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That was always good for me. Well, this survey by underwear brand Fruit of the Loom asked participants about the quality of their lives. Why does the underwear brand care whether you tuck your shirt in or not? (laughs) Fruit of the Loom makes things other than just underwear. Fruit of the Loom is doing science. (laughs) They they make make t-shirts as well. Yeah, the t-shirts that you put under shirts. Yeah, I guess those would be the kind of things you put tuck in. Right, because if you're not tucking in your shirt, you're probably not wearing an undershirt. They're probably working on some sort of commercial where it says, if you're tucking in your shirt, you need to be wearing a Fruit of the Loom undershirt. It See, makes it better for your bub blue. I am a uh, an avid tucker. I believe in tucking. But I get, over the last uh, you know several years, now that I work for myself, I get people making fun of me and telling me to untuck my shirt and things like that because it doesn't look right. I'm most comfortable when my shirt's tucked in. But If you don't tuck in your shirt when you're feeding the pig, they could eat your shirt. Yeah, this survey is so about people sense. who tuck in their, work, their, their shirts at work. Yes. Yeah. But what's, what, what is work for me? Well, is it when I, I go downstairs? Here. When I go downstairs in the morning in my pajamas to make telephone calls for Free Talk Live for advertisers? Is it when I go out to feed the pigs? Is it when I come here to the show and do a radio program? I would assume constantly. that this is probably any job where people are in like a social work environment with other human beings. Yes. You know. So uh, anyway, this Fruit of the Loom asks participants about the quality of their lives in relation to happiness, optimism, social status, income, and relationships. And the survey found that in each of these, men who tuck in came out on top of those who don't. This means that with only 49% of all guys tucking at least three days a week, there's a lot of work to be done. The so survey- there's people that only tuck a portion of the week? I don't know. It's very I, strange. I, it, it, well, it is a, a little... Am is a I the on- only one that <laughs> is hearing the double entendres <laughs> in any of this? I don't know what you're tucking about. Go on. Anyway, uh, (laughs) there's a lot of work to be done. The survey also found that Tuckers are 10% more likely to report being socially outgoing and 8% more likely to report that they date often. So these are happy Tuckers. Yes. Got it? Yep. They're... uh you know, they're doing well financially. They're they're rich tuckers. Yep. Happy tuckers. If you want to be uh, richer and happier, be a tucker. Yep. Yeah. I guess is what it is. So, tuck all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I tuck guess, all day and tuck all three, night. At least three times a week. Yes, at least I, three times a week. I guess what um you know what what I would ask here is is uh you know have you made a choice in your life to begin tucking more and if so has your life gotten better because I kind of. I wonder whether these this is causative or just correlative. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, uh, correlation. Not. I wonder if they're working causative. in a commercial to say that the people talk more if they are wearing fruit of the loom. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't couldn't say whether that's more likely to uh, to make that happen. But I, I don't. I, I, are you going to make yourself better off if you have a choice of tucking your shirt in at work or not? I'd say that you probably would, like it's going to make you look a little more serious at what for what you do, but in a lot of jobs, like Daryl mentioned, you don't really have a choice. I mean, I can see how people would be happier if they're tucking at work. Here's my <laughs> advice. Here's my advice, and it's not really my advice. It's George Costanza's advice. Oh, no. Just <laughs> if, if your life's not going the way you want it to, just do the opposite. Just do the opposite. That that's what George Costanza did, and his life improved drastically. Um, okay. So instead of chicken salad on wheat, he had tuna on rye because somehow that's the opposite. <laughs> and then he got a date at the cafeteria right away, and then something happened, and he did the opposite, and his life was better. And it was the summer of George. A George divided against himself cannot fall. I would say that if you want to have a better life, and this includes dating and jobs and those kind of things, is to be... Win the lottery? More excited. To be happier. To be less cynical. Um, Even cynical people don't like to hang out with cynical people. (laughs) Because it doesn't give them anything to be cynical about. So if you're, uh, you know, what I used to call ten times more excited. When I would go into a sales call... 
I would be, I'd give myself just a, you know, 15 seconds in the car looking in the mirror, and I would be 10 times more excited than I was. And, you know, that person, they're nice to work with. That person, you can trust them with a, with a project. That person, hmm, they're more fun to hang out with on the weekends and do whatever with. So 10 times more excited and tuck your shirt in, I think is uh, the... the <laughs> and know. more pieces of flair. What is a flare? Buttons? <laughs> yes. From Office Space, you need more flair. I don't know what you're talking about. More flair and tuck in your shirt. 855-450-3733. What do, we, what do you think about this shirt tucking thing? 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. I think or- Daryl would wear a Ric Flair flair. <laughs> Woo! LRN.FM is our Skype. Money, power, and respect are all yours at Credit Success Secrets Revealed. Com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit, did your nerves spike? You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine. So you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. 
You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Just read an article, but apparently people who tuck their shirts in are happier and wealthier and date more than people who don't tuck their shirts in. It's a stunning piece of information that I certainly was would not have guessed. It's Mark with you. Daryl. And Johnson. 855-450-3733. You can call in and comment on that if that's what you wish to do. I am headed off to Las Vegas at the end of October for the Bitcoin Investor Conference. It's at the D Hotel. They're, they take Bitcoins at the D Hotel, by the way. And I understand they don't take them for gambling, but they do take them for everything else. So uh, keep that in mind. I'm not entirely sure. I certainly will be able to report back once I uh, go there, and I'll attempt to use Bitcoins for everything. But this is an event you don't want to miss. They're going to have great speakers, including um, Stephen Michaels, who's helped putting it on, uh, Bitcoin Bell, better known as Michelle Seven, who's been on this show here, Tone Vase, a guy who uh, you know he predicts futures in Bitcoins, that kind of thing, uh, Trace Mayer. Uh, big name in, in Bitcoins, all going to be there at the Bitcoin Investor Conference. I would imagine there's going to be lots of people who are looking to invest and lots of people who wish to be invested in. Bitcoininvestor.com to go get your tickets right now. Bitcoininvestor.com. And Stephanie Murphy and Brian Sovereign will be there, uh, former co-hosts of Free Talk Live. I'll be doing Free Talk Live live from the event the 29th and the 30th. The D Hotel in Las Vegas, BitcoinInvestor.com. This is our first live event from Las Vegas, even though I've been out there quite a bit. It's the uh, first live Free Talk Live broadcast. BitcoinInvestor.com. Let's go to Aaron calling in from uh, Philadelphia. Wants to talk about shirt tucking. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live. Can you hear me now? Aaron, can you hear me now? Yep. I like can hear you. Yeah, Apparently, you can't hear me. There you go. Okay. All right. And I was listening to your conversation, and I, I was thinking about causation versus correlation. Indeed. And that was the first thing that made I'm me a, think of. I'm a person who, when I'm feeling down and depressed or whatever, the first thing that goes is social grooming. Like, I'm not as likely to keep my shirt tucked in at work if I'm just feeling frustrated, like I don't care what anybody thinks. Uh-huh. But when I am motivated and on point that I'm definitely watching my my grooming because they always say dress for the job you want to have and my manager she tucks in her well I mean I guess she wears dresses and stuff but she probably I, can she can tuck her blouse into her, to her dress does she have children <laughs> yes she does she's a mother tucker <laughs> and you're not going to tuck a blouse into a dress, Mark. That's not how dresses you, work. You, you would, I'm sorry, it's a skirt. <laughs> into a skirt. Yeah, sorry. Or, or a pantsuit. Well, right, right. But uh, it, I've been told numerous times that uh, dress dress for success, and that's uh, I think that's probably a strong recommendation. That Hold people, on. That's different people, than dress for the job you want. Well, what's the difference well, then? Well, you know, you might want to be a superhero, so then you go yeah. to work dressed as Batman, and then you get in trouble because, like, you know, that's not within the company policy. Aaron, you just let him tell his joke. You don't. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you just you, you just feed it to him because otherwise he's gonna fit it in, and it just doesn't go as right. well. So there you go. Oh, that's good, Darren. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Aaron, yeah, uh, yeah. I think you're absolutely right that, uh, you know, you're supposed to dress for that one position up from where you are. But I've got to say, I've had <laughs> I've had jobs where my boss dresses the same as I do. So are you saying that I should come to work in a bathrobe? Uh, because Ian wears a bathrobe? I, yes. Ian owns the company. Well, how are you going to dress for the posi- how are you going to dress for his position? Because he's the guy above me. So yeah. if I'm supposed to dress like the guy above me. You're not supposed to do anything like Ian does. Nothing. Now you're giving me contradictory advice. <laughs> Nothing like what Ian does. <laughs> so, so do so the opposite. Thing I'm... Go ahead, Aaron. Maybe when I also when I was in uh, undergrad and I was I uh, let my hair grow long and I didn't tuck my shirt. I wore torn jeans, whatever I felt like. 
and I had very low dating success. And then when I changed over to grad school, I, I smartened up. I started dressing with khakis and button ups, and that's where I met my wife. Within about two months after I started going to school, dressed dressed like I wanted to present myself well. Yep, things and, uh, uh, it, it did, marks right. The way you dress makes a real difference. Um, I can tell you, I was. Uh, uh, at a situation with uh, what was my former fiance, but for some reason she wasn't that interested in me when we had first talked. But then she saw me walking around with a cell phone out in front of the uh, the station van at a uh, remote. She happened to be, uh, you know, she I, I met her at a bar, and uh, you know she thought this looks like an important guy. I was giving directions to my friend Tommy to uh, to show up at the event, but I looked like a guy that was giving orders or something, and. Uh, you know, your looks matter in a given circumstance. Uh, that imprints on people. So, you know, be aware of what you look like. Yeah. Change the things that you can change. And the things you can change are, you know, nice, clean, wrinkle-free clothes that are tucked in. And, you know, if a if a tie is warranted, obviously there's some jobs. Ties that- are never warranted. Those are the worst fashion accessory of all time the nice thing about a a tie is that it will make a you can wear the same suit like suppose you have a black suit or a gray suit a different tie will make that suit look like it's a new suit every day that is why ties and the little hankies and all those things go with those things it's because they change the whole look that's why ties are good (laughs) and important and if you don't like a tie... Again, then somebody can walk up to you, grab the tie, strangle you, and now you're dead. But Where hey, you? at least you're already dressed <laughs> for your funeral. Where do you live that people walk up and strangle you with your tie? You know how angry I would be if somebody grabbed my... Never in my life did anybody grab me by my tie. And I wore a tie for years. What kind, what kind of psychopaths do you hang out with? <laughs> Oh, dear God. Aaron, thanks for the call. Yeah. Revealing the mind of Daryl here. <laughs> Is that what you think when you see people with ties? I ought to give that a yank. No. I don't like wearing ties, but it's always something that could happen. Okay, the it's last job I had, the, the last job I had where I had to wear a tie, I was working hospital security and there was a crazy unit and the crazy people, whenever you had to go into the crazy unit, the first thing they would do is grab the tie. Luckily, company policy said it was the clip on kind. That way somebody could not strangle you with it. Yes, I would say that uh, if I was walking into the crazy ward on a regular basis and the crazy (laughs) people pulled on my tie... Thank goodness it's crazy people in the crazy ward that are pulling on your tie because that gives me a much better picture of what's going on here. That, yes, clip-ons might be what's, what are called for. Clip-on ties, uh, the problem with them is, is they're sort of designed for a different era, and they tend to kind of only make it maybe two-thirds to three-quarters of the way down your belly. And that's not the way people wear ties anymore. You know, ties should go a bit longer than that. And, you know... Yeah, the I just on. don't like ties. Never have. Well, I understand. They, you they, like they ties. make me feel like I'm being choked, and yeah. I don't like being choked. You I mean, wear I'm flip not flops into everywhere. Auto asphyxiation. Yeah, you, you wear flip flops everywhere. It's not exactly yeah. What's your fashion point? advice here? Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. What's the easiest way to make your life better? Make yourself more successful. Eight fifty five four fifty free. No, never play the lotto. There's a good way to be successful. If you're like me, you're concerned about the stock market and the economy. You're asking the questions, but it just doesn't seem that you're getting the right answers. Well, my friends at the Wealth Preservation Institute not only have the answers, but they put together a free report, how to survive the upcoming economic collapse and protect your 401ks, IRA savings, and retirement income. Don't hesitate. This report's for free for a limited time by calling 888-772-2929. That's 888-772-2929. Take back your financial lives today. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. 
There is no such thing as attention span, according to Jerry Seinfeld, who figures that people have an infinite attention span if you are entertaining them. Hey, he's kept us from channel surfing for several decades, and now he's making more millions as a Las Vegas headliner. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're looking for work. So choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Avoid redundancies such as added bonus, advance warning, end result, prior history, or personal belongings. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Talk Live. When there are cameras around, it doesn't make a difference. There were people with video cameras all over this event yesterday. That's and good. it looked like um, uh, these people were trying to get away. Yes, honestly. they were. Yes, they were. They were being these shot. People rushing towards the uh, cop phalanx. Nope. That's right. They were trying to get away. And those batons weren't rubber like the bullets were. They were either trying to get away or they were p- members of the news media trying to cover the event. Right. Police are supposed to be there to protect and serve. Be peace- Allegedly. Allegedly to be peace officers. And instead, they're creating war. And, of course, the uh, chief of police is claiming he'll investigate. What they're going to investigate, I don't know. It's going to be very difficult to identify the officers in this video footage because there were so many of them. Mm-hmm. There was an army of police officers out there, and every single one of them was participating in the attack on unarmed, innocent people. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. The number is 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE here on, well, this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. Daryl. And Johnson. And you can call in and, well, you can change the topic if that's what you want to do. But we've been talking about, uh, well, this silly article that's comparing, you know, shirt tucking to success. Basically, you tuck your shirt in and you begin winning in life is the claim. And I can give you another Tell way. that to the bag boy at the grocery store who has to tuck in his shirt for minimum wage. Well, if he uh, if he does it with the right attitude, he will be um, moving on up to produce in the, the near future. <laughs> uh, anyway, another way to start winning at life is to make sure that you're protected online. And a way to do that is to have ProXPN. If you care about your online privacy... You need ProXPN. It's a virtual private network that encrypts all of your online data before it even hit, gets to your internet service provider. ProXPN does it all right, offering OpenVPN. That's the gold standard of network encryption. They've got apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android. There's even Linux support as well. So set up as a cinch. Plus, unlike those other guys, ProXPN keeps no logs of your activities whatsoever. Now, ProXPN has even more servers than ever before, giving you greater speed and security. They've also now integrated Noncli. 
Facebook.com to mask your emails. So if uh, you get a premium account, uh, they accept a uh, credit card and even Bitcoin. You can get uh, 50% off of the regular monthly price for the lifetime of the account. When you buy an annual account with your code FTL50, and you can end up, that can end up being even cheaper than, say, a good cup of coffee. And now they've sweetened the deal even further. If you go to proxpn.com slash amp and you pay with Bitcoin, you can get two years of ProXPN for only $49.95. Plus $5 of your purchase will go to the AMP program to help Free Talk Live spread the ideas of liberty um, just a little bit farther. So it's a huge savings, and but that's only if you pay with Bitcoin. So it's pre, uh, proxpn.com slash amp for uh, a big savings. You keep hearing about your online privacy being infringed. Go to proxpn.com now. Use coupon code FTL50 um, or go to proxpn.com slash amp to take advantage of their new amp offer. Help spread the ideas of liberty and take back your privacy. Johnson, apparently the TSA has finally found what they were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> the person was not tucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so the the TSA uh, in Orlando has apparently saved their airport from a penis. Oh, my. <laughs> so the Transportation Security Administration agents at the Orlando International Airport stopped a transgendered passenger when a suspicious anomaly appeared on a body scan. Uh, the anomaly was her penis. Yeah, her penis. As no. expected, the TSA has come again under blistering criticism for their lack of competence when it comes to protecting the nation's airports. The passenger in question was Shady or Shady Petoskey. I'm not sure how to pronounce that first name. S-H-A-D-I. Uh... A transgendered woman who was passing through the TSA full body x ray machine. It was at this time her anomaly raised TSA alarms. She was then pulled aside and held in airport security. Petoskey tweeted the entire ordeal and has since become a cause celebre. Since the incident, the TSA has taken to Twitter to assuage concerns about their compliance and insensitivity. After All right, so let, let's read these tweets sure. from Petoskey. And I'm looking at this article. The first tweet says, There are now two police officers, one explosive specialist, and four TSA agents. They are taking my phone for screening. The next tweet says, I am through. It was about 40 minutes, two full-body pat-downs, fully disassembled luggage. I missed my flight. Nice. Um, I kind of wonder uh, this, uh, who, when I've been shaken down by the, 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 the TSA, they make sure that I get somebody who matches my gender. They don't send the gals over to, uh, you know, fiddle, fiddle in my bathing suit area. Um, they, they send the guys to do that and they, uh, you know, they, they're gentle and strong and they, talk their way through it and tell me everything they're going to do. I'm now going to touch you with the back of my hand. <laughs> and that, that kind of thing, right? Uh, what happened here? Oh. Uh, two body, two full body pat downs. Somebody, four TSA agents and two police officers and an explosives specialist. Yeah, that thing doesn't blow up. Well, it does if you tug it right. Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe the TSA officers were just really into chicks with... <clears throat> <laughs> I got to say that it's <laughs> I I hope that no TSA uh, officer female TSA um officer here just sort of stumbled upon the offending item. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's so like have you ever seen tweets? that there's a video there's a great video where a guy is it's a officer that gives a a young black gentleman a pat down and he's like, you know, doing the the terry pat or whatever and you know, goes up his legs and he's like, "What's this? What's this?" And the kid's like, that's my penis, sir. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't see that video, but I know that there's another circumstance where apparently a um, a porn star who's got a record large whatever, and he, in this circumstance, I guess that the, he'd gotten pulled aside, and the TSA uh, screener guy just didn't believe that that could be 
what his uh, what he was feeling. It's like, no, no, it wouldn't be down there. Oh, yes, 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 it is. <laughs> Do you have a kielbasa in your pants, sir? <laughs> sir, we're time to you, get You are not allowed to bring lunch meats through the security line I'm on a, your person. You got me. I'm a sausage smuggler. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's... Uh, <laughs> I guess it, it just desserts in that circumstance. <laughs> you know, I, I have a related question for you guys. You know, I, I don't have any articles to talk about this, but I know that this is an upcoming issue, speaking of the TSA, and I want to know what, what you guys know about New Hampshire and the Real ID Act. Well, um, New Hampshire has uh, a law that says that um, it has opted out of Real ID. New Hampshire is actually one of about a dozen states that have done this, by the way. Five. Yeah. It's only it's down to five. It's down no, to five. there's still a dozen states that are not in compliance. Okay. The news article is only mentioning four states plus American Samoa. Okay. And the reason American Samoa is on the list is because people that live in American Samoa that were born there are not citizens of the United States. So let me rehash. They are ask- U.S. nationals. So the other seven states that are not in compliance with Real ID all require someone to prove their legal status within the United States before they're allowed to get What's a driver's Real ID? license. What's Real ID? Real ID, I, I do not know what the acronym stands for, but it's something that was added in as an unrelated amendment to a spending bill back in, I think, like, 05 or 06. Snuck in in the middle of the night uh, as a tag-on bill uh, to a bill. Right. After it failed on its own merit as a standalone bill, it got thrown in as a rider on something else. And essentially, it sets national standards for driver's licenses. And in amongst these national standards are a lot of unfunded mandates to the states of you have to do it this way and you have to do this and you have to request this information and this and that and the other thing. And pretty much every couple of years since like 06, this has come up of people in half of the country won't be able to fly without a passport. And it's always a different number of states that they wind up throwing on this list. But and right now nothing it is... ever winds up coming of it because the feds wind up delaying implementation because it would be too much of a hassle to actually deal with. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, Johnson. Um, at this point, it's a it, it could go either way, but they're claiming that it's a big deal. And frankly, real ID should be repealed. Yes. Not be, because of the way it was passed more than anything else. Congress shouldn't be passing laws together like this, tacking one thing on to another. 855-450 free. Free Talk Live. For P150, P150 GA, P150 OK, P150 TN, C250 A, C250 E, C250 Q. Not available in all states. What's the scariest thing about going to the dentist? Opening your mouth or opening your wallet? Because just a simple cleaning can cost $100. And things like root canals can cost you hundreds more. If you don't have dental insurance to help, call Physicians Mutual Insurance Company, 1-800-809-5580. This isn't a discount plan or preventive-only coverage. This is real dental insurance that helps pay for checkups right away. So you can call today and get your teeth cleaned tomorrow. Plus, it helps cover the more expensive procedures you might need down the road. Fillings, crowns, bridges, even costly dentures. There's no deductible and no annual maximum. Your acceptance is guaranteed for one of these insurance policies, even if you're retired. There are no networks, so you can choose any dentist you'd like. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll rush you a free information kit with all the details. 1-800-809-5580. That's 1-800-809-5580. 1-800-809-5580. A revolution in body protection has arrived only at FortressSurvivalLLC.com. Introducing the revolutionary patented Level 3 Bulletproof Vest. 100% Kevlar, 100% American-made. Concealable, fully adjustable, and the lowest price on the market. Adult size normally $289.99, now just $250. Kid size normally $239.99, now just $200. Get affordable protection with a Level 3 A Bulletproof Vest from FortressSurvivalLLC.com. For thou art my rock in my fortress. Psalm 31.3. 
<laughs> no way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. hey. Who do you think Excuse you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Yeah! Free Talk Live. Final segment. The number is... 855-450-3733. We have been all over the board this evening. Right now we're talking about Real ID. What Real ID is, is, is this is a, uh, in a law that was snuck in, I think it was at midnight, through a Senate bill, Senate budget bill, and they managed to, you know, they managed to tag it on. First off, I don't think anything should be law. There should be one one sort of rule per law, as far as I'm concerned. All this sticking a bunch of things together is garbage. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's the law of the land now, but they haven't been able to make it happen. It's been more than 10 years uh, since it was passed, and still, they haven't been able to make it happen. There's still some states that are hanging on, and, um, well, it should be interesting to see what happens, because every once in a while there's sort of some rumblings, but the rumblings have gotten, are rumbling a little louder than they have been. Um, I don't know. I remember when I was working for the airline in 2009, and one of the stories came out that said, on January 1st, 2010, people from these, and it was a list of a bunch of states will not be able to board an airplane with their driver's license. And so we were being trained on how to do things. And well, you can still accept that uh, to show who they are for the purpose of them checking in, but the TSA can't accept it. So it doesn't affect you as an airline employee in any way, as far as checking them in, it's going to cause them problems uh, when they go through security. But looking at the TSA website, and they actually do have information on identification, and one of the things is forget your ID. In the event that you arrive at the airport without proper ID, 
And one would presume that that means an ID that expired yesterday or an ID from one of these states where they're saying, we're not accepting these anymore at some point in the future, maybe. Uh, because either you lost it or uh, you left it at home, you may still be allowed to fly. By providing yeah. additional information, TSA has other ways to confirm your identity, like using publicly available databases so you can reach your flight. We've so seen people that don't use IDs to fly, and they still are able to fly. Right. You get to know a TSA agent very well. What's that mean? They're going to interrogate you okay. until they can... Confirm through databases that you are who you say you are. And considering that there's the... the, uh, the and then they're probably going to pat you down. What is it called The now that the Homeland Security has like basically access to every single database? Um, Fusion centers? I, no, I mean that the law enforcement agencies are all sharing information now. I don't know. Hold on. A- ask the question again. I don't know. There's some name for the program that uh, that started to allow uh, agencies to share all the information. The Patriot Act? Yeah. Well, I mean, no. The, but, well, that that's the thing yeah, that I authorized them to actually share. I don't know the sure. name of the program. Right. So, yeah, the Patriot Act authorized an information sharing program between uh, law enforcement agencies, which means that even if it's not compliant... They can use your New Hampshire driver's license or New York or wherever. Right, because they would to say it's access not a all of your information. ID. They can say this is not a proper ID. However, we'll use your ID to access a database and that's proper information. Thanks. Yes. Done. We and, don't and actually the, need a passport. We've got your information right here. It's in the database. So it's all scare tactics. Yeah, pretty yes. much. Yes. And then just like they have done over the last decade, they're going I, I am speculating here that they're going to put this off yet again because one of the states on that list, New York. Think about yeah. how many people yeah. live in New York. Yeah, you're talking about something like a tenth of the U.S. population. Yeah. You don't want to mess with that percentage of the economy and say you can't fly anymore. Also, I think probably some of the busiest airports in New York. I mean, you've got JFK and LaGuardia, yes. international airports, both in new york and then newark is right across the river and a lot of people will fly out of there instead of jfk or laguardia depending on which airline they're on let's go to david calling in from san fran david you're on free talk live what's on your mind well it's actually sam fram sam fram uh, sam fram yeah sam fram cisco you know i was kind of interested in this from i i'm big into economics and when you look at at what has been going on since 9-11 with the fear-mongering, they've created these artificial budgets uh, almost, you know, twice a week they come up with some new uh, unprovable budget. They they get all worked up uh, with some new terrorism uh, hoax, and then they issue themselves a blank check to, to fight these things. And so, and then of course, since the uh, uh, the thing that they're attacking is top secret, uh, we the taxpayers can never find out how well they're doing, yeah. whether there is any success. And so, I'm very concerned about what are called unprovable budgets. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, so everything has gone down since September 11th exactly how Osama bin Laden said it would. I mean, essentially, Osama bin Laden addressed the American people in in 2001. I believe it was still 2001 when he, that video came out. But um, essentially, there was an address where he said, "Like you will uh, destroy your own economy uh, it's because like the of death the of a thousand cuts." Yeah, it was like it, this is exactly you know he and spelled it out. You're 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 going to lose your freedoms. You're going to do this, this such and such and all everything that Osama bin Laden spelled out that said what would the goal of the September 11th attacks were has come to pass due to the actions of the American people and our government. Um, you know, I was very into uh, his actual speeches and tapes and videos and all of that, and I'm not sure if I remember that exact quote. And, uh, there were a lot of those tapes that turned out to be hoaxes, uh, so I'm not sure if I would entirely go by that well i don't know if it, i don't know if it was a hope because it was all over the national news at the time i mean i watched it on television on one of the major news networks so right but they were the ones that came up in other words if you know what pixels are uh laying a photograph when you enlarge it and enlarge it a enlarge pixel it. 
Yeah, pixel, right. Okay. Yeah, and so when you enlarge it, enlarge it, you get into those videos of him, and you realize that they've pasted in his face right. at a different pixel. But, okay, let's presume that that was a fraudulent video, which I'm not really going to, but let's let's say for uh, you know argument's sake that it was a fraud somehow. It still happened in 2001. Whoever did it was a prophet. You know, like obviously well, they were, you know, very uh, well able to predict. Right. And we're saying yeah. that this is what's going to happen to America because of this terrorist terrorism. Right. And, like, and it I went, could, came to pass. I and could it was go ahead and predict it right now is the next terrible thing that happens. The government will have a response that is going to be intrusive upon our rights, expensive to implement, and largely ineffective in stopping whatever it is that they actually intend to stop. So there's my prediction. Well, I, I, yeah, I, and it's interesting because America, you know, when you hear about, the, you know, like Trump and these guys saying we should build a big fence, right? Well, America was actually held uh, strong because we didn't have a fence, and we were encouraging people to escape the tyranny. And you, you know what a brain drain is when all of the smart people leave town. Right. Well, all over the world, there was a brain drain, and every all those smart people were coming to us, and they were inventing things, and they were creative and, and uh, creating new businesses and all sorts of the, – the expansion of America based upon attracting people uh, uh, to freedom was our strength. And not only were these people coming from around the world, but they knew how bad it was in their hometowns and their states and their nations and all of this other. And the idea that they were, if we ever got attacked by those states or nations, then uh, we would have a, a big army of people who were quite familiar with how to, to get back there. And so the idea that these guys, uh, the, the neocons of today, are so stupid that they're building a fence to keep out the smart people, to keep keep them trapped in tyranny. It's insane. And, I mean, obviously, absolutely. I mean, I can I can see why people say that they don't want uh, poor people here draining on the economy. But shoot, set up a program where they're not a drain on the economy. I appreciate the call, David. Thanks. As a matter of fact, this is one of the things I always like to point out. The Berlin Wall was actually officially referred to as the anti-fascist protection rampart. It was a wall to protect the people of East Berlin from the terrible folks that were outside. Now, I don't know if they were clamoring for it or demanding it. I'm not going to make that correlation. But that wall was there to protect them, was what the government was saying. Thank you very much, everybody who wants to protect me, but I don't want your protection wall. I don't want the new... East German Wall. It's been Mark with you. Daryl. And Johnson. Eight. Uh, excuse it. Excuse me. Trying to give that a telephone number. Uh, check out our Facebook page at facebook.freetalklive.com and our uh, regular website, freetalklive.com. And drive safe. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which